Y'all thought it was gone, right? Y'all thought it was over. Let me tell y'all something, though. When he say the voice of the people, he mean that shit. It's the return of the underdog, the voice of the people. Yes, baby. The wait is over. We are back. Next GTO. I am your host. And I just can't tell you guys, you know, before I get into all that, saying how much I missed you guys, I must introduce Always Faithful, the best co host any podcast host can have. And now, here's Vic. Yo! What the fuck is good? Damn, Ness. It's been like. I don't even know how fucking long it's been. But we're back, baby. Your fucking favorite podcast is back. Finally. Ness over there. I don't know. I think Ness. Something happened with Ness, man. I don't know. Maybe he could tell you a story. Well, you already know, man. Uh, I'm just happy to be back. You know, um,. I went through a little slump and whatnot. You know, I, I wasn't sure, Vic. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you was feeling like me. I wasn't sure if, it, if this was something we should have kept doing. You know, with so many other radio shows out there. And then, you know, it's just it's just tough, you know? So much competition. And then, you know, I got this, this strange phone call, man, out of nowhere. And, uh... I don't know, it just it just rekindled a fire in me, man. And, uh, you know, my man Virgil Hunter, he just was like, yo, Ness, you know, don't, don't give up, especially when you guys are on this level, you know, just don't let it go. And I'm like, matter of fact, I'm going to just play you out a phone call because it's, it, you know, it, it was crazy. It was crazy. Here goes Virgil. Come on. Don't let it get away. Don't let it get away. Don't let it get away. Yo, Yo I had the same be... feeling. I, I had the same feeling, man. And then Virgil was whispering in my ear. I don't know if he was l- watching porn or something, but he, he was whispering that same shit in my ear. And you know what? It ignited the fire in me. So we back, man. Virgil Hunter, man, the inspiration of the Boxing Boys. Yo, Virgil Hunter has to be the weirdest motherfucker I've ever met, dude. I mean, it's so funny because people consider him creepy. With the whole whispering thing, but since I've interviewed him so many times, you know, I find it normal, but wow. The the whispering is out of control. Hands down, it's out of control. But we're back. Uh so much to talk about. I know we got an itinerary, Vic, but what we're gonna do, I don't know if uh, you know, our producer put that in there. Uh let me see if I can scroll down. I know okay. So we're going to jump right into Gennady Golovkin since it's something everybody wanted us to talk about. Everybody's upset at me because they didn't get to hear my takes. And the bottom line is this, man. Gennady Golovkin is as advertised. I can't complain too much. But at the end of the day, people, say what you want. He hasn't faced the top fighter yet. Like, Matthew Macklin is a top 10 fighter. But at the same time, Matthew Macklin lost to Felix Strom. De- depending who you talk to, Vic, he, he didn't beat lose. Him. Come on now. I mean, depending who you talk to, he beat he won, him. He won that fight. He got robbed, man. It doesn't matter. Depending who you talk to, he beat him. Then when you talk about um, Sergio Martinez, as soon as Sergio Martinez got robbed with that fake knockdown where he re- literally tripped over Macklin's feet, I was there live. What happens next? He steps on the gas, takes Macklin out. So it's no surprise that Golovkin took him out because Golovkin has been showing the power that he showed last Saturday all the time, or two Saturdays ago now probably because it was June 29th. But the point is this. Golovkin is as advertised. He does have power. But let's not get away with a, you know, get carried away. Let's see him face some top middleweights. Could we say that Peter Quillen is a top middleweight just because he has a, a, a belt? No, not really, because Peter Quillen hasn't faced elite-level competition yet. But at least he's an undefeated fighter who also has a lot of power. But before I let you give your takes on that Golovkin fight, Vic, um, 
he's not doing too bad. He did what Canelo did on Showtime. 1.1 million viewers tuned in, which was uh, Gennady Golovkin, a.k.a. Triple GZ's uh, biggest audience till date. But we were both at that fight live. What were your thoughts? Let's keep it short because there's so much to talk about. I mean, we got Cotto coming back. We got uh, the one and only Dominican carrying DR on his back. About to break some Cuban flesh uh, August 2nd on ESPN. I mean, there's so much to talk about. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. Macklin's easily top 10. That, that That's not, you know, that's not debatable or anything. I mean, he is a top 10 middleweight. And what I what I found out that night, and what I would have found out, or what you would have found out, was Triple G said when I we was hanging with him afterwards since you left early. Uh, after the second jab, he knew he hurt Macklin. So after the second jab, he knew he hurt Macklin. He knew it was over. That it was just only a matter of time. And Macklin, dude, I think Macklin was like, "F it, I'm gonna get hurt anyway, so I'm just gonna go in there, and I'm gonna try to see if I can land the lucky shot, or you know." see if Triple G will run into something. And that's why he got caught, because the first two rounds, he was cautious as hell. I mean, very cautious. But then after, I mean, third round, he was like, fuck it. Give it up. He went in, and he got knocked the fuck out. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of options for, for, for Gennady. I, I was impressed because that body shot was sick. I heard that shit. Uh, I was there. It looked like he broke a rib, sounded like he broke a rib. And we found out was that he broke a rib. Um, but you know, there's rumors yeah, Vic, September and Vic, November. But Vic, I mean, see, Vic, this is what I'm saying, man. Now all of a sudden he broke a rib. What the hell did I tell you? And what did I ask Matthew Macklin himself? What did I ask uh his trainer? What's his trainer's name? Uh, the guy um, that always stops fights early. Jesus, Buddy McGirt. Buddy McGirt. What did I ask them? And they lied to me because. Listen, I don't. I know you guys are gonna say, "Oh, Ness, you just hate Triple G. You never want to give him his credit." But I told Vic, I got a text that day telling me Matthew Macklin hurt his rib in camp. He tried to pull out of the fight. They offered the fight to two other people. Vic, I don't remember the names. I think. Um, oh, I, I told you that. Uh, what's this guy's name that was gonna fight Molina? No, wrong, wrong fight, wrong fight. Uh, the two fighters actually were Don the Bomb George and uh, Truax before they fought. That's how long ago Macklin had hurt his rib. Now all of a sudden he broke his rib in a fight. No, that shit was already hurt. But is that it was already hurt? Me? I mean, that's the rumor it was already hurt. But I mean, I heard that shit. And that's that shit was that shit was. I don't know, man. I heard that shit, man. It, it was it was a devastating body shot, dude. Whatever, Vic. Whatever. <laughs> I'm not saying that it wasn't. All I'm saying, if a dude got an injured anything and then you hit him in the right spot, it's just going to do more damage. But, all right, it is what it is. I mean, you know, clearly, you know, I'm going to be known as the hater on the group for this one. Well, c clearly, I mean, who do you want him to face next, dude? I mean, obviously, Quillen's off the table because it's not going to happen. Showtime, Golden Boy, don't do shit with HBO. I mean, you I want mean, Matthew Macklin? You want him to make Matthew, uh, not Macklin, Martin Murray a good boy? Would that impress you? Not really, because then we could say the same thing about Murray, right? He 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 te technically, and depending on who you spoke to, lost to Stern. And then he technically, and depending on who you spoke to, he lost to Martinez. So what's the difference? So then who, who, who would in the you, flesh. What, 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 would you, what would impress you, dude? What would impress you? Martinez, what? Chavez. Martinez? Yes. Yeah, um. God, I mean, I, I think Martin Murray's in a better position than Martinez right now. Whatever, man. Marti Listen, every fighter has a bad night, so Martinez looked bad in the Martin Murray fight. You think he's going to look bad in the Golovkin fight? After and you seeing think, this you think, Mar you think Lou DiBella is going to put him in with, with Golovkin? Come on, man. It'll happen next year, man. You and I both I know, know that. Man. We had the same conversation with the same guy. Same night, same fight. One of us ain't telling the truth. That's all. I don't we know, know that's going to happen next year. But, so they say. So they say. I'm saying, so who you want to see him with? You want to keep seeing him with fucking either, you know, Euro bums like Paraska, who you thought was dope until Mora punched him in the face all night? Or I want to see, or, I want to see him with whoever steps up, dude. I want to see him with whoever steps up. Right now, like, man, Sergio, uh, Sergio Mar if he beats Sergio Martinez, right? He beats Sergio Martinez. What are you going to say? Oh, 
but he just had surgery. You see how he looked the last fight. His reflexes no, are gone. I tell you, and he's I'll tell you this, what I'm and say. he's older. And then what? What credit are you going to give him then? You you want him to move up and fight Andre Ward? I know that's what you want him. To do. No, that's not what I want. I don't want him to move. I don't like when fighters move out of their division for what? He shouldn't be forced to move out of division because the people scared to give him a fight. It's not his fault. Sergio don't want to. I mean, yeah, Sergio Martinez don't want to fight him or Chavez on top rank or Peter Quillen with Golden Boy. No, but I tell you one thing: if he does fight and beat Martinez, I don't know what people are going to be saying. But Virgil Hunter, he gonna be saying that he been saying this all the time. He's ready to be whooped. He's ready to be whooped, man. He's ready to be whooped. He's ready to be whooped. Yo, and guess what? That's not looped. That's how weird that dude is that he said he's ready to be whooped like seven straight times. That's not a loop. That's the actual clip. Something wrong with Virgil, man. Wait till I see him. We gotta talk. <laughs> But we definitely back the boxing voice. I'm seeing in the chat. People want us to play the intro again. We're going to do it probably in the second hour. I know a lot of you guys missed it, and I'm mad at you for missing it. I pushed the show back on purpose for you West Coast dudes. Could be on time, and you still wasn't ready. But moving along, uh, I don't know why this is uh, titled as the weekend recap, because this fight has not even happened. It hasn't happened yet. But um, Javier Fortuna. Louis Franco, uh, they're going to meet Friday Night Fights on August 2nd, ESPN, and ESPN Deportes card at the Buffalo Run Casino in Miami, Oklahoma. I have no clue where that is at, but this is a fight, Vic. I guess the only thing that we could take away from this fight as a Franco negative, hasn't fought in a long time. Damn, let me say it so people don't think I'm all rotten Javier. I was going to say no, that. I said ahead. as a negative. But that's the problem. That Franco claimed to have retired. Now he's back. I don't know. I think that was, you know, probably trying to get rid of some managers and promoters. You know, Cubans jump on a speedboat, come over here, become Americans or, or whatever you want to call it, get their citizenship. But they have like three promoters and five managers at the same time. So I don't know. But what do you think about that fight? Just briefly, you know, how do you see it going? Well, you know, I, you, I, I'm pretty high on Fortuna. I think Fortuna is one of those exciting featherweights. And Franco, I mean, Franco was du du dodged by, uh, was ducked by, what's his face, Gary Russell, who's doing a lot of ducking lately, who's going to continue fighting TBAs. But that's another story. I think it's a solid, you know, solid test for uh, Fortuna, being that he fought some bum in AC and almost killed the guy about a few months ago in April. Or was it March? I don't remember when that fight was. You remember that fucking knockout when he almost killed the guy? Yeah. That stretcher and everything, bro, I thought the guy was dead, man. Dead. But, uh, you know, this is going to be an interesting fight, and people are going to see how unbiased I am because I think it's going to be a very tough fight for Fortuna. Very tough. Simply because Franco uses a really good guard, and Fortuna's so wide. I've been waiting for a guy who could box, and Franco, while he may not be a Gamboa or a Rigondale, he still does have those 300-plus amateur fights in his belt and uh this is gonna be fortuna's probably first time facing somebody who's you know that talented i mean we got to remember patrick highland didn't allow fortuna to look too good so let's see what a a, a schooled good background from fortuna does and when i say background of course i mean amateur background but vic um Looks like Orlando Salido uh, is going to be facing uh, for that vacant world title. I know we had him on the show. He's going to be fighting Orlando Cruz. So it's going to be Orlando versus Orlando. And that's going to be happening in the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas. Um, that fight is going to be on the undercard of the Marquez, Timothy Bradley. But does this card not even happen because of Marquez and Bradley still disputing over Drug testing, and it, we haven't done a show in literally 13 days, and these guys still haven't gotten it together. I mean, it's a good question. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's on the schedule. They got an opening card. Uh, they got an opening bout. They got that, that guy, uh, what's his face? Uh, the Irish dude that uh, always packs the, the New York fights at the uh, Garden Theater, Shawnee, whatever his last name is. What is it? Shawnee Monaghan? Yeah. Monahan they got him opening. Mercy, 
I, I guess they got Salido and uh, now Cruz. So, I mean, the car's coming together, but what if the main event doesn't happen? Yeah, man. I don't know, man. I mean, I, I've been out of the I've been out of the scene for a little minute, you know, since we've been off the show. Uh, and I haven't read anything. So, I don't know, man. Speaking of having read anything, let me see if I could scroll around here because um, I know that on Twitter I let everybody know what my boy, uh, boxing's local crazy man in Kelly Pavlik said on Facebook that he would be fighting um, Roy Jones Jr. in Atlantic City. But no one's written an article about it. Not even yeah, us. Yeah, they someone uh, I think it was Ernie uh, from uh, Boxing Radio who said that people have been trying to contact Kelly, the people in Ohio, and uh, yeah, basically that's false. So uh, I don't know where that so came from. Facebook got hacked. I don't know, man. Maybe he was just drunk and trying to mess around. You know, Kelly, man. Yeah, well, that's why I called him the I mean, local crazy man. Uh, hey. I, I'm shocked that that. Is not in an itinerary. Uh, our producer is actually a Kelly Pavlik fan. Well, uh, I don't even want to say this. Someone told me they spoke to uh, they spoke to Jack Lowe last week, uh-huh. or in uh, in Connecticut. And Jack Lowe basically was like, you know, I don't know how long Kelly's gonna live. Like he's like, I don't know. He's like, I don't know if it's brain damage or if he's just always getting drunk, having seizures. I don't know. I mean. It, it's sad, yeah, man, because Kelly was uh, hater, Kelly's man. one of my boys, but you know when he was. You gotta take. Jerm- you gotta Jermaine take anything. Taylor out. You gotta take anything Jack Lowe says with a grain of salt. He's he's bitter over the whole Kelly Pavlik thing. Anyway, he's never had anything nice to say after the breakup. So let's not start believing him now. I don't know, man, but I think uh, a guy close to that situation like that. I mean, we're talking about the guy's life. We're not talking about his boxing career. Like, I don't know, man. I hope Kelly stays retired because. I remember that he was like, oh, I got seizures, I got brain damage. Like, Kelly don't need to be back in the ring, man. Well, that you know, that's why the name that I've just given him is fitting. But, Vic, um, I know I'm going to get a lot of heat. People are going to be like, what's wrong with me? But I'm excited about a European fight, dude. Which is? What? Fury versus Hay. Oh. Wow. Um, if you guys thought Broner Malnazi was uh, was some vulgar, crazy shit, man, <laughs> this just started, man. This just started. It's it's gonna get uglier and uglier and uglier until September twenty eighth. I'm excited though. I'm very excited, and I, I think HBO is gonna buy that fight and probably couple it with uh, Adonis Stevenson and Tavares Cloud on that day. So. Heavyweight boxing. I mean, we got that, and then we got uh, Pavek and Klitschko the week after. So whatever's left in the heavyweight division, I mean, the revival. I mean, I'm not calling it a revival, but it's a pretty good two weekends of heavyweight boxing. Yeah, I'm excited, man. But we got our first caller, first caller, which makes me even more excited. Welcome back to the Boxing Voice, the voice of the people. 707, who's this? What's up, man? This is Corey Johnson from Sacramento. What's going on, Corey? What's on your mind, player? Nothing much, man. Just wanted to let you guys know I just got into your guys' podcast or your little the boxing voice thing about a month ago, and I'm just loving it. It makes driving a lot easier. Oh, man. Well, well thank you very much, man. Unfortunately, we had about 13-day hiatus due to uh, me moving and resituating myself, which still hasn't taken place, but let's keep it <laughs> That's um, all good, man. I've been listening to all your old uh, videos. All, I've seen all your old uh, radio shows. And I just want to get your thoughts on one thing really quick. Um, I hear a lot of hate on Andre Ward being a boring fighter. And I got to agree with you guys a little bit. But I think lately, I mean, he's kind of changed a little bit. His last couple of fights against Dawson and Carl Frost, he wasn't really holding that much. I mean, he was just beating the crap out of them. What's your thoughts on that? Well, uh, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. I agree with you. His last two fights were... Uh, um, a lot better from what we were used to, but I, I just can't get high on Andre Ward right now. I mean, this guy's fought. Like, yeah, he, I mean, he's boring as hell. His personality, maybe? he has no personality. What do you, I mean, Vic, what is it? Eight rounds that he's fought in 24 months or something like that? I don't even know. Something weird. I mean, he's like, he last fought last September. Before that, yeah, that's fight, right. 
November 11th. What's your thought, when though? Well, what's your thought to say, say in the next year or so, if Triple G moves up the super middleweight and fights on their ward? How do you see that fight playing out? I I don't even want that fight to happen. It's too soon. You think it'd... I think Triple G should not be forced to move outside of his weight category just because there's a bunch of middleweights scared to fight him. I think he should right. be able to dominate his division. Uh, when Bernard Hopkins was at 160 pounds, he defended his title, I don't know, for what, 12 years, Vic? It was a long and, time, man. And like 20-something defenses? It was 21 unfair. defenses. Well, 20, 20 defenses, yeah, 12 years straight. It would be unfair. You know, Triple G is good at that weight. Um, unfortunately, because of my move, I didn't have internet to put up the post-fight press conference for the Golovkin fight. But his team don't want him to move up. Abel Sanchez right. doesn't mind it, but Tom Lawford, he's, he, he doesn't feel that a ward fight should happen right now. I mean, he's looking at a ward fight in two years from now, and I'm happy right. with that. Uh, but there's well, guys I want know, Triple G to take care I'm of. I'm pretty, he uh, up. sorry to interrupt, but I'm pretty excited to see Triple G. I mean, he kind of reminds me of just like a, like a throwback fighter, old school, man, just. I don't see any. I know he's only he hasn't really fought anyone good yet. Because, you know, Maglin's kind of a bum, but I really don't see Sergio Martinez being him. I think Sergio Martinez is garbage lately. I, I think Peter Quilla, from what I'm hearing in the sparring session, will get his ass whooped too pretty bad. I don't think anyone in the middle of the division is going to beat Triple G. Well, um, I agree with you. I agree with you. I think that's his as of right now, at least. I, mean, I don't see anyone. I mean, Peter Quilla, and they asked him in an interview a while ago, oh, what do you think about sparring Triple G? And he was kind of stuttering his words a little bit yeah but this is the thing man the gym is the gym dude that's not right, nothing right. to do with what happens in the ring and quillen has showed that he has power he probably doesn't oh, have yeah. knock out power you know because he put nick nindam down six times and then you know he put winky right one down but these guys are getting back up but clearly he has the power to hurt Golovkin, and Golovkin's there to be hit. Did he look a For lot sure. better in this fight and not get hit as much? Yeah, but he was also fighting a dude that was way scared, Garbage. you know, in the ring. Like, Macklin got in the ring being frightened. Oh, I know. He's like, it's like a Mike Tyson fight back in the day, man. Everyone, he, he lost already pretty much going into the ring. Absolutely. Well, you know, I want to thank you guys for the call. I'm at work right now. I just wanted to try to give you guys a call, see if I can get through. It's pretty fucking easy. Um, and one more thing, too. That guy, James, that keeps calling, you got to keep that guy on, man. He's good listening. <laughs> I don't agree with everything he says, but that guy is fucking hilarious. <laughs> All right, brother. Will do. Thanks for calling. All right, man. Thanks. The Dream, you just call. Call back, brother. So, Vic, yeah, man, I'm super-duper excited with this hay fight um, only because of this. Tyson Fury doesn't deserve to fight a hay because of Hay's, I guess, status in boxing. But hay hasn't done shit in so long and then looks so bad versus Latimer Well, that- I mean... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hear where I'm coming from first. Uh, he didn't look good versus Latimer flopping around the ring. So if Tyson Fury could rid us of David Hay and his, you know, propaganda and his outbursts and, and talking his way into big fights, and at the same time, that'll be Tyson Fury's best level of opposition. And it's intriguing because... A guy with no power like Cunningham, he's he didn't even hurt Adamic, even though he beat Adamic, you know, to all the fans. But he didn't hurt Adamic, and he dropped Fury. So Hay does have power. He ran around the ring versus Valuig, but when he cracked Valuig, he shook up his whole life. So this is an intriguing fight, man. Um, it's an intriguing fight. I think you give Hay a little too much credit. Um, Hay at cruiserweight, uh, you know, I respect what he did there. At heavyweight, I mean, he beat uh, that seven-foot Valoiv or whatever the hell his name is who had a title. Uh, he beat Chisora, which was a good win. But outside of that, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think Tyson Fury has as much right to fight David Hay as David Hay has to fight Tyson Fury at the heavyweight division. 
But, but that but being said, that being said, I, I favor Hay in this fight. Uh, do I want Tyson to win? Yes, because for some odd reason, I like Tyson, bro. He's funny as fuck, man. Yeah, but Vic, as a fighter, you have to agree that Ty- uh, that David Hay is further along, has been in with better opposition, and it would be Tyson's Fury marquee name on his resume if he wins. But before you answer that, let me go to these two callers. Uh, welcome back to the Box of Voice, Voice of the People, 925. You're up first. What's going on, brother? Who's this? Hey, what's up? It's Casey from the East Bay. Casey, what's going on, man? What's on your mind? Hey, at first, I got to say, like, I, I completely agree. You know what I'm saying? I've been watching the show. I completely agree that Triple G shouldn't have to move out of the division, but he sets himself up for that shit for trying to call out Mayweather. If you're saying somebody should move up to fight you, then you should move up to fight the biggest fights, especially if it's near your division. You see what I'm wait saying? Minute, like, wait a minute. Wait he a wants minute. to call out wait. Mayweather for him to fight him, but it's like, okay, you could go up six pounds and fight Andre Ward. And Andre Ward is nowhere near the type of star, but it'll still give you a marquee fight. But wait, Vic, do you do you know anything about him telling Mayweather to move up to 160? No, he said he'd go down to 154 to fight Mayweather. Okay. But Mayweather, now, now, where did Mayweather start his career? Where did now, now, you know, are we what I'm sure? saying? Where did Triple G start his career though? Like, KC, if he wants KC. Mayweather to fight him, he can't fight Andre Ward. KC, let me ask you something: Are we sure that Golovkin said this, or that Abel Sanchez, his trainer, said this? I've seen it everywhere. I've seen it all over. I've seen it from him saying that Mayweather is his dream fight. I've seen it in his weird little went language, him saying. I understand his situation, but Mayweather is my dream fight. You know how he talks weird, but that's what he says. He said, I understand his situation, but that's my dream fight. So I'm saying, though, when you want somebody to meet you for the big fight, you know what I'm saying? You could also also make the fight. Casey, you know that there's a difference there, and the difference is money. It's a bigger money fight with Mayweather, and with Ward, there's nothing except whatever HBO is going to be offering. But I'm saying it's not just HBO. If he goes to Oakland, that's actual revenue. I know Andre Ward is not a big star when he sells tickets in Oakland. He's not going to fight him in fucking Connecticut. Yeah, but that's only the game. In a small-ass casino, he's going to fight him in an arena. Yeah, but KC, but all that, I'm saying, I'm not saying it's a necessity. I'm just saying, if you want to stay at your weight class and do that, then be about your worst. Say, I'm going to stay at my weight class and I'm going to beat everybody. These opponents at middleweight should stop ducking me. I mean, I know he don't speak English that well, but I mean, Kerry and his and, and the people that are managing him, that's what they should be saying. They should be talking about middleweights, not talking about Mayweather coming up. Or not talking about a possible Cotto fight, or that Martinez needs to fight him right now. Everybody knows. Everybody knows Martinez is injured. You can't even argue that. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm, that's the only thing I'm saying though, is that if, if it's so absurd for him to step up to fight Andre Ward, he should talk about middleweight and only middleweight. Well, I mean, he's uh, when when he, they were on here on the show, they basically said that they would go down to 154, 154. and fight Mayweather, and they would go to 168 to fight Ward. But right now, it's not the time because. You got to think, Andre Ward's been out for a year. There's no way in hell Andre Ward's going to want to go into a fight like that being off a year. I mean, just that's just my opinion. I think Andre Ward's going to want to come back to somebody else, then fight a guy like Triple G. I mean, am I wrong, or does Andre Ward, coming off a of shoulder surgery, jumps in with Triple G? No, that makes absolute sense, Vic. 223, two, you're up. Yo, what's up? This is me, Tony. Tony! What's up, bro? It sounds like a... I haven't talked to, like, a relative in a while, and I'm catching up to him. You know what I'm saying? I miss you guys, man. I know, man, and, and I'm glad you brought that up. I was waiting for a break in the show. I wanted to tell you guys, all of you guys, everyone that listens, especially the people that call in, of course, because those are the ones that I've built a relationship with. Man, you guys feel, I feel like, yeah, my family. I know somebody on Facebook, they like, oh, they quit. Hey, Vic, you didn't even see this post. They're like, oh, they stopped doing their show. Mostly all podcasts stop because they don't make any money. It's not about the money for us, man. We love doing this shit, and uh, we love you guys, man. I mean, people that meet us, they see that. We real when we meet y'all at these fights, man. I feel like we know each other. One day I'm going to meet Tony, and uh, you'll see, Tone. I mean, you've already called from so many numbers. Like, as soon as I seen this number, and you said it was you, I'm like, oh, yeah, Tone's girl ain't letting him use the phone again. That's right, that's right. 
That's right, man. Even <laughs> even, even how much I love the show, even though you give me in trouble sometimes, I'm still gonna bite the bullet and call up. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, so what's going on, man? What's on your mind? No, nah, man, I'm talking about Triple G, bro. I mean, man, I'm pretty much sold on Triple G, man. Like, he convinced me, man. Like, that dude, he, he's really strong, man. That dude can punch, man. Um, It's not that, I think uh, Macklin said after the fight, it wasn't uh, the Tommy Burns one punch, you know, or Mike Tyson, but it's just that, that thumping, that thudding ass power that he got. And what I wanted to say is I wanted to see him fight Quillen, but we all know what's going on there. And there's no way in God's be nerfed that he's going to get a fight with Floyd. Floyd's not going to fight him. I mean, I, you know, not to say that Floyd's a bitch, but I, I think that'd be kind of unfair for Floyd, for people to... Yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to see that fight. I'm right, sorry, you know, I, I don't know. I mean... That's... Yeah, I that, think that's, it's that's a middleweight right there. I mean, Triple G is a middleweight. Like he's a he, he's a full blown middleweight. That's unfair to put to tell Floyd you got to fight. Mean, I know he can. I know he can make one fifty four. They said he you know he comes in at one sixty seven in camp, so losing thirteen pounds is not gonna be a big deal for him. They said. But I mean, you guys, I, I don't want to see that. Come on, not, not, now you're just going a little overboard. Canelo, fine, you know, he he still hasn't made the jump to middleweight. Triple G's been a middleweight. I mean, for I don't know how long, but right. Just no, dead I, I like. Uh, I would like to see him and Andre Ward get on. I would really be intrigued by that. Man, him please, or, Tony, it's gotta be Tony. Julio. It's gotta be uh, Julio Cesar Chavez or somebody like that. Tony, you know, don't push been. for that, man. If if all you fans keep asking for that, that's what we're gonna get. And it's not right. fair for Triple G to move up, man. It's not. Why right. should he have to fight Ward? It's so many right. middleweights out there. We need to force the real fights that need to happen. Quillen needs to fight it's him. Quillen. Quillen, Quillen needs to it. fight him. Chavez needs to fight him. Vera, right. Rubio, whoever's in the top 10, Daniel Gill got a belt. He needs right. to fight him. He already he already ducked him right. once, gave up the WBA. Now he's fighting Darren Barker. Man. That's not even fair. These niggas is ducking them. Let them clear out the division one way or another. Make these dudes retire if they don't want to fight. But if he leaves his division to fight Ward, then that's an excuse not you to make fight. You, you're making a lot of sense, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's the way it's got to be. And like I said, we, we as a fighting public, man, they got to listen to us from change, you know? Listen, man. He shouldn't even care, bottom line. HBO's going to keep paying him a million dollars to beat up bums, and he's going to fight for two rounds like he did this fight and make a million dollars in fucking six minutes. So fuck it. If they don't want to fight him, keep making your money, bottom line. Hey, man, and I think that, that Golovkin is a guy that you can sit there and look at, and he's an exciting fighter to watch, man. Everybody loves, everybody loves that puncher, man. No. Uh, Dream, is that you? Yeah, that's a kid. That's a kid, man. What's good with it, man? What's going on, brother? What's going on? Cool, cool, man. Uh, shout out to uh to everybody, man. All the fans of the boxing voice, all the fans of the the boxing roundtable, man. We've been gone for a minute, man, but we coming back soon. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to the you know our sister, the boxing voice. You know what I mean? Holding it down. Uh, yeah, man. Um, what's going down, man? I hear you guys talking Triple G. Uh, you know, um, impressive victory over uh, Matthew Macklin. Demonstrated his, his power. You know, he's he's like a bigger Matisse right now. You know, uh, I think Matisse does better boxing skill than Triple G does. But uh, nonetheless, um, he got scary power. And, uh, you know, the child's fight is the fight I want to see. That's a fight I want to see, and that's a fight that I believe Chavez wins. Oh, wow. you know, unfortunately, if, 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 if he comes dedicated like he did against uh, Sergio, I think that uh, Triple G will meet uh, his match because uh, you know he he's gonna have a guy who all he knows how to do is come forward. So you know, let's see how Triple G takes punches, and I don't think he could take him as well as he dishes him out. That's to be debated. Vic knows for a fact Chavez's next three fights. Vic, tell him. Well, I, I can't know what the fact is now because. Yeah, Bow, yeah. you're next, Bow. Relax. I, I can't know. I can't tell you what it is now because he's apparently 200 pounds. 
and uh, his fight with Vera was uh, his fight with Vera was moved to a, a super middleweight fight. Did you know that? That's... Uh, you know I ain't know oh, that. Uh, okay. Uh... So he's fighting Brian Vera at 168 pounds, dude. Uh, from, what, from what we heard that day, it's, it's Vera and then a rematch with Martinez. Uh, and then what was the third one, Ness? Uh, man, I don't remember. That's why I pinned it on you. Man, it's, uh, see, it's two weeks ago. Uh, I drank a little that night, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't believe he's fighting uh, Martinez next. Uh, I mean, I don't believe no, he's in one of the three. No, Martinez is the third fight. Um, Martinez is the third fight, but it's, it's one. Oh, I, I, oh, believe he takes, get... I believe he takes a triple G fight. I believe he takes it. No, no, no. It's, uh, it's Vera, Murray in Las Vegas, Bob Arum, who used to be a lawyer, is working on getting Murray's visa. So it's, Mur- it's Vera, Murray, then Martinez. No Golovkin in the plans. Yeah, I don't think he's fighting Martinez again. Let's see how well, that goes. Let's see if Martinez doesn't change. retire. Is a I mean, Triple G, he, he was going down. Triple G is either going to fight Bums, Ward, Chavez, or Martinez. Those are, the, those are the only guys left in and around his weight class at HBO. So that's, that's who he's got to fight. Well, we'll see. Dream, I'm going to let you go. Got some other callers here. Uh, Bao King, what's up, brother? And Sean, I see you. You up next. And Ramiro. Hello, guys. How you doing? Bao King in the motherfucking flesh. What's up, baby? Bao? Bao drop. Uh, let me see. It's Boogie Down Sean. Go for it. What's going on, man? Well, what are we talking about here, man? Sean, first thing I want to tell you is I like that, man. You muted yourself as soon as I picked up. I ain't even had to remind you. You official. You official. You already remember. But uh, we yeah, talking Golovkin. We talking whatever you want to talk about. We talking about Boxing Voice back, baby. It's been 13 days and we back. Yeah, yeah, man. It's, it's, it's good. It's good. You know, getting ready for some... After boxing, you know, um, Mike Mike Bay coming back, you know. But what what was what, what we need to talk about is the good boys. And Sean, there's a lot to there. What I mean is the good boys is the Golovkin fans. You know, they call the the pack the diehard pack fans, pack charge. We know what they call the Floyd fans, and this is and the Golovkins is the uh, the good boys. You know, and this is my thing. This is the problem with boxing nowadays. No fighter could go on big network TV and knock two, three people out. And that's it. He's a monster. He's a murderer. Look at Berto. Oh, Berto bummed it. Look at me and Khan. What happened? What happened to Ortiz? What happened? Now, give it. I think Golovkin is better than all three of them. I really do. All I say is, let's, let's just fucking wait, man. Like, why people, like, just, they don't, like, they so thirsty to cheer for somebody and make them bigger than what it is. It, it's ridiculous. I'm not saying the Lockins are bum. The guy, he might just be the real deal. I'm not saying he's not. What I'm saying is, let's chill. Look who has he beaten. Rosado moved up to 154. From 154 to 160. The same dude Angulo beat like in three rounds. Yes, that was early. I don't want to hear it. Angulo still beat him faster than Golovkin did. Ashida. Technically, he's a junior middleweight. His best win was at 154 against James Kirkland. Went up to 160. We saw what happened to him. Prosca. Oh, oh, he was a top 10 middleweight. Fucking bum. He was in... Not that he was a bum, he just not top ten quality me. He just lost the fucking Mora. Convincingly lost the Mora. Definitively lost the Mora. Then, okay, I give him Macklin. Yes, Macklin is a solid, solid 160-pounder. And he went through him in three rounds. You know, by but oh, he's the best, he's the best super middleweight in the world. Look, I will slap the shit out of people. Sergio is the best. He has earned it. He's been through the gauntlet, and he's the number one. So what? He did not look good in his last fight. We know that. 
let's be real here. Ness, you know. Vic, you know yourself. He wasn't 100% recovered from that injury. The only reason he fought Murray was because it was in his home country. He didn't want to cancel that fight. There was a lot of people depending on him to perform that night, and he just went through with it. Training camp wasn't good. And with all that, you, to me, he still won. It should have been a draw because the second knockdown. You understand? At worst, it should have been a draw. But he still won. You understand? So people, you know, they just want to flip on you because of your last fight. All of a sudden, Mer- Sergio knocked out Macklin. He stopped Barker. He destroys Zurich. He knocked out Paul Williams. He should have be knocked. Um, got a TKO win against Centrum. You understand? This guy's the real fucking deal, man. Golovkin oh, hasn't oh, done oh, nothing. Oh, 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 Hey, Sean. Yeah. Hello. I, I yeah, hear what you're saying. Yeah, what's good? Um, I, I, feel what you, I hear what you're saying, man. Um, the thing is, is like, it's, it's not only the fans saying that, you know, Golovkin is a monster. It's the other fighters who are ducking him. They're speaking probably louder because there's a lot of people who, want, who don't want to take that risk against Golovkin. You know what I'm saying? They're the ones that are saying that they don't want it. Like, Chavez don't want to... It seems like Chavez don't want that fight. Like, I want to see Martinez and Golovkin. That's the fight I want to see. But Sergio, at one time, was one of the most duck fighters. So was Paul Williams. Every, right. every, there's always a fighter that comes. Every you know year or so, there's always going to be a fighter. There's right. going to be nobody want to take the risk against. And you're right. I'm not saying it's true. Fighters, it seems like... When the, when the last name comes up, they don't seem so eager to get in the ring with them. I think fighters, what the thing is this. When it comes to Golovkin, they think business. They say, is is it worth fighting him? And, and that's what it's coming down to. They figure, yo, the way he's winning, I really don't want to get in the ring if the money ain't that good. You understand? But regardless... Fighters is going to have to fight him. He's going to start getting the fights that people ask him for. No, he's not going to get Peter Quillen. You understand? Unless, you know, something dramatic happens where HBO starts doing business with Golden Boy slash Al Heyman fighters again. And, and we don't know. I, I just want the best to fight the best like we all do. All I, ask, all I say is this. I'm not saying anything negative about Golovkin. All I'm just saying... Let's just pump the brakes on them. Yes, no, he's looking good. good. HBO is always going to make somebody seem like Superman. They do that with every fight. It's every fight. Jim Lampley and Max Kellerman always got their knee pads on for every time they announce a fight. Because all they're doing is sucking. They're on their knees and they suck them. You understand? So that, that, that's just what it is. The last thing, like I said, he just might be the real deal. You understand? Now the question comes real quick. I know, you know, I'm rambling. That's why I'm the maniac. You know, I get crazy. If, if the last thing can't get not, he cannot get the fights he wants. He can make 154 with no problem. Now, yeah. there's a lot of fighters at 154. But there's one fight in particular that fights at 154, but it's not a 154 pounder. And you already know which name I'm going to say. Floyd Mayweather. Now, I'm not saying before people, the Floyd fans is listening now in the chat room, before they start breaking their plates in their kitchen and crashing their plasmas, because, you know, they, they, they just love this Floyd Mayweather. What I'm saying is in the future, in the future, I'm not saying Floyd has to fight Golovkin. No, he doesn't. You understand? Or I'm just saying, if Golovkin wins two more fights at 160 and looks spectacular and he can't get no big fight there, and now people say, wait a minute, he could make 154 with no problem. Floyd's four at 154. Can, can, this, can this happen? I'm just saying, can it happen? I'm not saying it has to happen. You understand? I want people to listen. For the love Before of God, they, they put words in my mouth. It can happen, man. Yeah. Sure. That's what I'm saying, because that's Sean. what fighters do. Golovkin said he's willing to do it. Yeah. Sean. Yes, yes, nice. Let me get some other callers in, all right? All right, all right, cool. <laughs> all right, Sean. Ramiro, right. what's up? 
Bow King, you last now because you fell off, man. It's your own fault. Romero, yeah, so about... No, I'm loving, I'm loving what Sean's got to say there because he's making a lot of sense as well. Definitely. Uh, I mean, you, you can't get too hyped up about Golovkin. However, one thing that you've got to understand about Golovkin, Triple G, is that he has a good amateur record, over 300 amateur fights. And in those, he has beat uh, Derrell and knocked out Butte. You know, that's in amateur. Right about that, but Butte's a bum. Ramiro, what's yeah, up? You're up, know, baby. Talk in, to uh, me. Knocking anybody out in, a, in an amateur fight is pretty good going, man. And, uh, you know, and uh, but no. But either way, what I want to say is this, right? Hold on, hold on, Balkang. It's Ramiro's go because you fell off. Ramiro, are you going to talk or are you buying tacos? Yo, man, I'm right here. What's up? Talk to me, baby. Talk to me. Yo, well, who, who was the last caller? Was that Sean, the dude from New York? Yeah. No, man, watch. <laughs> this is what's going to happen. People are hyping up Golovkin. I mean, I'm one of them, too. So, I mean, but the dude took out Macklin, someone, and then it took Sergio how long to take out Macklin? It took them, what, 11 rounds? I think he did it in the 11th? Stars yeah, make fights. Rounds. Stars make fights. Different, completely different, different fights. Different stars. No, no, no. I was talking about Sean, man, not you. <laughs> Yeah, no, hey, I'm no not, so, I know you're talking about Sean, but I'm still saying it's different styles, mate. Fights, man. No, no, but this is the thing. Sergio's already getting known, and everybody's looking for Golovkin. Sergio, that's not going to happen. Even DeBella himself said that's not going to happen. So what's going to happen is probably at the end of Floyd's career, because he's, what, five fights with that contract? He's probably going to get that Sergio fight because that is the one middleweight that he could probably fight. And Sergio's already old. He's his knees messed up, his hands messed up. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think Martin. I don't think Sergio. I think Sergio Martinez is the best middleweight in the world, uh, undisputed best middleweight in the world. But I do not think he should fight Golovkin. I think he shouldn't well, he do it. What, what he's saying is that he's not going to fight Golovkin. Is that Sergio is going to get a Floyd fight in that six fight deal? because he's still got five left. And I think that's a good point because I think I think Floyd cares about his legacy somewhat, and that and being the middleweight champion of the world. I mean, Hang on, how is Floyd just coming to here? How is he just... Oh, 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 what, what's going on? Well, he brought that up. Remember, no, he brought no, it so, up. He made a good point. Okay, well, no, it, that, the Golovkin's not going to fight. It's, it's, it's not going to... The dude's coming back from an injury, so his knee was messed up. He's yep. going to get a tuna fight, someone easy in Argentina, and there's no way in hell that they give him Golovkin because Golovkin would tear it out apart. I guarantee you that. I would... I, I think... I think... I think... Uh, at this stage... Yeah, no, I, I, think I, think bow, bow, I mean, bow. I, mean I, was there when, I was there when he fought Chavez. I love Sergio, but he's old, man. Like it's it's pretty much done. He's just gonna try to get uh, the more fights for his money. So I know the Floyd fight, he's gonna get it because he's gonna get paid nicely. Because what, what Guerrero got what three million? And Guerrero, I mean, come on, dude, that guy. Is, I mean, he's good, but he's a B side. He's no A side. All right, Romero, let's let Bow talk since he couldn't let you talk. Go ahead, no, so, Bow. Man, sorry, I, I thought he was a general chat, man. Now you keep, keep going, Romero. <laughs> no, right, hey, no, wait, so hey, what, was there any other topics or was it just uh, the Sergio Golovkin? It's whatever you want to talk about, brother. Okay, the next one, and then this is, this is what kind of got me this week, was the whole Regal thing. Oh, People yeah. People are saying he's, that he's boring and, I mean, it's true what he said at the very end of his fight. People who know boxing will appreciate this. And, I mean, I'm not saying put him in the main event. Put him, in the, uh, put him as, as, a, as a co-feature bout and just, I mean, just let him just make people look like idiots. I mean, he could fight Donaire again, and you know Donaire doesn't want that fight because he cannot beat him. Donaire, I mean, when was the last time he actually tried for a fight? He hasn't done shit. And then that lame-ass excuse, oh, I've been eating show, uh Surgery for two years, that's bullshit, man. Come on. So we all know, I mean, I just hope, I mean, Aram said, I think it was the one that Steve Kim said, I think that Aram had said that, no, they're like, no one's going to, no one's going to let down my, my boxer, so hopefully they bring him back. Yeah, he said, uh, Ken tweeted that uh, he spoke to Aram today and that he's trying to get Riggin now on the undercard of Mikey Garcia's next fight in November, which will probably be Rocky Martinez. And basically he oh, said yeah. that, you know, HBO is not going to exile any of my fighters. Yeah, and that dude, I mean, that dude does whatever he wants with HBO pretty much. I mean, because they're, they're not in the Golden Boy business, so what the hell are they going to do? 
Yeah, but Bob Arum said, uh, and I quote, he said, every time I mention him, they throw up, Arum said. Rigged that was yesterday, while, though. That was yesterday. Yeah, while immensely talented does not make for exciting fights. So I have to figure out who I could put him in with, said Aram, adding that he didn't think it was the that it was right of HBO to push to match Donaire with Rigandau and now turn his back on the winner, which was Rigandau. Yeah, so you see, see, that's the problem with it. Everybody, we, we live in an age where everybody needs everything fast and exciting. No one likes dull shit anymore. That's why baseball's not as popular as it used to be. So the thing with that is they should just put them in with people who think that, that, that are going to outbox them. I know the modest one's impossible because that's never going to happen. But I think if modest stepped in there and somehow they were able to make a fight, that would probably be the most exciting one. Uh, Darchinian's still out there, but I heard that he's probably going to fight Donaire again and get his ass kicked. I have no idea why they're making that fight again. To and make I Donaire mean, look but, good. I mean, they need to build their cash cow back up, of course. Yeah, but I mean, who? I, I mean, I, yeah, I get it. But he's not even that popular. I was there for yeah, he's not was that it, Chavez, Chavez Rubio, I think. And nobody knew who the hell he was. I mean, he was the co-feature. But I mean, he does not ratings. That, they, it, it's they, they it's not up, about they tickets. They're not pairing them with Pacquiao, but they hated each other, so they, they, they couldn't match him up on the yeah, card. Yeah, but it's not about tickets for Donaire. It's about ratings. He does ratings. Yeah, but anyone can do ratings on HBO, Ness. I mean, it's just a bigger platform. I mean, consistently anybody this cannot. year, everyone's been anybody doing Anybody cannot. Anybody yeah, cannot. Can Berto yeah, wasn't can. doing no, a million no, views. No, that, no, that is true. I don't know who said it, but that is true because, I mean, look, Stevenson uh, and what? What the, does that other thing it's named Dawson? They did what one point two million? I mean, I don't even it, believe that number. Because, and that was the I mean, same day. That was the same boring. day as uh, the same day as Lopez and Maidana. The same. The same. Okay, day. so so other than the Ortiz fight, and I'm not even sure that it did. Give me one Berto fight that did over a million. I'd have oh, to look damn. that up, but I'm sure. Exactly. So I'm sure one has, dude. Exactly. <laughs> You think and fucking him and Freddie Hernandez did thing, over man. a million? That what, I'm sorry? I said you guys think him and Freddie Hernandez did over a million? No, no way. Exactly. <laughs> that, guy, no, that, guy, that, guy, that guy has the God. That guy has Heyman. So, I mean, it doesn't matter because either way these guys get paid, but then that's why HBO got tired of that shit and kicked everybody out. They're like, nah, man, we're tired of this shit. So, that's why they're out of that business. I mean, he's in the other Man, I hope God has kicked his ass. I... I should be there. I think John, I think if John's gay ass goes, I think I might end up going to that one. But I hope Carras kicks his ass, man. Burst was a bitch. <laughs> Romero, let me get Bao Kang on. Been waiting patiently there. Bao, what's up, brother? What's on hey, your Romero, mind? Hey, Romero, thanks for the time, call, man? brother. Yeah, no problem. Uh, guys, I'm, I'm good, man. How you doing? Oh, man, just glad to be back. Glad to be I back. Know, man. Bloody hell, you've been away for a long time, man. Yeah, man. I mean, thanks to Virgil Hunter, we're back. Really? Oh yeah, man. Uh, let me play. Let me play the. Uh, he called me. You know, he said we got a good thing going, and mm-hmm. uh, he just said, "Don't let it get away. Don't let it get away." Yeah. <laughs> Vic, hey Vic, how you doing, man? What's going on, Bal? What's up, Brent? Yeah, I'm good, man. Hey, listen. Uh, Tyson Fury first. There's so much to talk about. I mean, Tyson Fury versus David A. Uh, I think it's a great matchup of styles. I'm I'm very happy about the fight. I think it's a great matchup of styles. But I'm I'm very annoyed the fact that uh, here in the UK, uh, Sky are making people pay for it as a box office fight. That means we got to pay like about fifteen pound to watch it on TV. Wow! Is, so it's a pay per view. So yeah, like, yeah, 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 pay per view. And I think that's ridiculous because I don't think what? this fight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, How much uh, is fifteen is pounds? Match up of style, American eh? dollars. Fifteen pounds is about ten dollars. No, it's no, not. Dude, pounds uh, worth way more than dollars. No, it's dollar. about twenty twenty five dollars. Twenty five dollars. Okay. You complaining about a pay per view costing twenty five dollars? We're about to pay eighty bucks for Floyd Canelo, bro. It's eighty. Oh, I think it's 75, actually. 75, yeah, but, yeah, but what I'm saying is I don't think, in terms of the boxing uh, scheme of things, I don't think this fight 
should be a pay-per-view fight. I think he's a great matchup of stars. But why? Uh, it's it's kind of what you said earlier, Vic. It's like what has David Hay really done? It's like he's getting another ten million no, out of the common Vic fans. Vic didn't say that. I said that. Oh, did you say? It? No, you no, you were bigging up David Hay. I was I wasn't bigging him up. I mean, for I, me, but I'm the one think, that said that he hasn't really done shit outside of look like a moron versus Latimer. Well, it was the big toe. It was a little toe. Sorry, you know that that was that was a big, big. You know, it was hard to stomach for people. And then the Orly Harrison fiasco again. That was like uh, people had to pay for that as well. And I thought it was but a bit Bal, wrong. Let so. me ask you something, Bal. Why mm-hmm. why do you guys not like Tyson Fury? And I say you guys, I mean UK guys. I, 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 don't, I don't dislike him. I don't dislike him. I think, uh, in fact, I've got to give props to Tyson Fury from one point, if, if anything. When he started his career, when he first stepped into the ring, he was very out of shape. And if anything, what he's done as boxing teaches people, he got himself in better shape. Because if you look at his body type, he, he was, you know, he had love handles all over the place. But when he's now, he's, he's like in, in a lot better shape. So, you know, he's been a student of the game. And I'll give him credit for that. But in terms of natural ability and so forth, and, and he, because, you know, like I said, I, I, like, I, I love boxing from a world aspect. So I don't uh, particularly say, oh, the British fighters have got to be what they, you know, what, what they shouldn't be. I, I judge it from a world level. And I think he falls a bit bit short of that. Hence, the, there's no heavyweight, big British. And, well, David Price, look at that. David Price against Tony Thompson. Yeah. The rematch. That just shows that Euro bums are Euro bums, bro. But it's, it's not about the Euro bums because it's, it's about that, yeah, there, there is, there's, there's something, there's, there's a, uh, a difference in, in the gap and in terms of, well, David Price, fast track, I mean, that was just a shambles. But there is one guy to, you know, we don't want to uh, badger the, the, the British uh, boxing. There's one, one kid that I, I think could go, go somewhere, and that's Scott Quigg. You like Scott, Scott Quigg? Scott Quigg. I think he's, he's, he's showing me something. He's showing me something. He's showing me something. So you think he's with the right guy now with, uh, with uh, Eddie Hearn uh, after leaving No, uh, no, Ricky no. I think, he, I think he needs to move uh, to the U.S. possibly. Um, uh, or, you know, ideally, he, for him, ideally, uh, go to Mexico and if he can learn to speak Spanish because I think that will suit him brilliantly uh, for his fighting style. But, you know, we've got to look at the practicalities of things. But I think, uh, I think he could do well, but he, he needs to take the step and uh, go, go somewhere else. And I don't, I don't want to, um, you know, discredit British boxing, but I do think that... Uh, people are trying to fast track it. I mean, they had Lennox Lewis in. Uh, with, I mean, Lennox Lewis is a, is a great champion, we know, but he never fought a southpaw, and uh, uh, David Price uh, fought a southpaw two times in a row. David Price is a bum. No matter how you try to sum it up, well, no, 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 he gassed out. He gassed out. He's the, well, a friend of mine said to me, he goes, he's not even amateur. He's like a, a blue collar or a white. Goes, he's, oh, he's, it, it, well, it, well, look, let's move on. Um, Golovkin, right? You, you, you've mentioned, you mentioned uh, a few guys have mentioned there. I think a great fight would be in terms of styles and potenti- potentially could happen. Uh, Golovkin versus Canelo. Hey, I, I, that shit ain't happening. That's, Canelo's got to move up soon, right? How long is going to be at 54? Exactly. That, hey, Vic, come on, man. You know Canelo's getting a Floyd Mayweather rematch. I mean, this fight is. And do- don't get me started. Let me pose you this question. Before, not, to jump, not to jump off to- topic too much. Let me pose okay. you this question: If Floyd Mayweather schools Canelo so bad, schools him so bad, would you want to see a rematch? Let me tell and you would, something. And would man. Floyd want to continue fighting? Because what else is there for him? Let me tell you something. They rebuild Canelo with two fights, and then he's Floyd's fifth fight again. But, Bow, we got to go. We got some other callers here. Uh, 925, you're live, and then Real Talk Boxing's up next. 925, what's hey, up? Yeah. Hey, yeah, had dropped off before. Uh, hey, I wanted to say, y'all said you're off, but did anybody else notice that PR stunt by uh, Nonito Donaire saying that his wife had jumped into a pool after a drowning child and injured herself? But only his Twitter and only two papers in the Philippines had any news on it. 
it blew up Twitter. It was all over. I look up the only news that's on is boxing sites, and I look at every all. I look up local media. I look at the only two. It was the Philippines, uh, Manila Times, and Manila Standard. So how does only two sources from the Philippines covers it, but no lo, uh, no no local media or nothing. We had it on Twitter first, like this is the first taking summary, a picture of a bubble bath and saying she torn a ligament, jumping in after a child to save her, and she was a hero and this and that. It was ridiculous. Wow. That's just shameless. It was like he even stretched it out too and saying like, pray for my wife. I hope everything goes good. The due dates in 17 days and all this bullshit. I mean, like, wow. dude, he, he, I'm, I'm Filipino, dude. I'm one of the, I'm one of the unbiased people that calls here. I'm from the Bay Area. I don't even like Andre Ward. I'm just saying that shit was shameless. Like for the Twitter news, hey, but. Hey, man, I wanted to ask you all with the whole Twitter thing, is it true that they're not going to show Gary Russell Jr.'s next fight? He's going to be off TV. What card is that? Is that the uh, the Mitchell, not the Mitchell, the uh, Lakovich and uh, what the hell is the guy? The, the heavyweight. Wait, 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 Vic. Wait, Vic. Uh, KC, right? Yeah, yeah. Wasn't it August 9th? I, I forgot. <laughs> I don't get what you're saying. You're saying that they did a publicity stunt to make his wife look good? Yeah, they did a publicity stunt to make his wife look good to Filipino fans because Donaire is not popular amongst Filipinos. This is what might not be known for people that are not Filipino. For one, Donaire goes on record talking bad about his father. A lot okay, of people but wait, but wait, but wait, but wait. Slow boxing. down, slow down, Casey, slow down. I, I just want to get some clarity here. So she yeah, saying, yeah, that's what I was saying, though. She, she allegedly saved the young child who was drowning in a pool on 4th of July in the Philippines or in no, California? It was in California, but the only, only, uh, only uh, a credible uh, to cite it was only the Manila Standard and the Manila Times. There was no, no local media covered it. Okay. All right, so so he went on. on Twitter. He went on Twitter, and then boxing, the Manila, these, the, how the Philippines found out. You know what I'm saying? Like the Philippines found out about it before the local media found out about it. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm saying. You gotta understand that Donaire is not popular amongst Filipinos, especially not his wife. I mean, for real. Even Bob Arum, when when Donaire tried to go to Golden Boy, Don, even Bob Arum was like, Filipinos don't like him. Filipinos don't like his wife. Hmm. Like uh, it's on, it's on. Like I, I wish I could. I, like I'm not next to the computer, but if I was, I could bring it up. He was like, he I just thought flat he out married like the wife like to be more Filipino. But anyway, we're going too far into the gossip here. Uh, let's get back to the subjects of boxing. What what else you were talking about? Kovalev or something like that? Oh no, I'm just. I'm. I mean, it's kind of crazy with the Rigo uh, situation. But I just gotta say, man, it, it's fucking Gary Russell is not getting televised. I'm fucking glad. I'm fucking glad. Stephen Espin- es- Espinosa finally said, "Fucking Al Heyman, you ain't putting this bullshit on our fucking network no more." So, so I, mean, shit, yeah. I know. I'm, I know. I'm not the only one that thinks that fucking Gary Russell Jr. is fighting fucking below negatives. I mean, I'm not talking about nobody. She's fighting below negatives. No, you. I agree with you one thousand percent. But Vic. So the Ponce de Leon fight is not happening? Nope. Pretty much. Uh, Gary Russell said he wants to take a tune-up or something. Yeah, I but told Gary, you what he told Gary me. Gary Russell's got the I balls t- to, to talk shit about Abner Morris. <laughs> what I told oh, you man. what he told me. He told me he was going to take a tune-up, then he's getting the winner of Orlando Cruz and Salido. How's he going to do that, though? I don't know how he thinks he's going to get a top rank fight, but <laughs> every time he's calling out a the fighter, they're on top rank. I mean, he wanted Walmart, too. Thing. Exactly. Like, same with Walmart. He's, he's calling out Walmart. He's been talking yeah. about fighting after fight, right? He was gunning for Walmart, knowing that that fight wasn't going to happen. Yep. Well, KC, let me get to some other callers here. Uh, Real Talk Boxing, what's up? What's going on, fellas? What's up, brother? Chilling, man. Just glad to be back. Hey, man. Next time y'all take a vacation, man, shoot a brother an email. Man, I wish it was a vacation, brother. I wish it was, man. Where y'all been at? Uh, I I was in the middle of buying a new home, and that still hasn't happened, but I had to leave my old one. So now I'm, like, stuck in the wind with no internet. But because people, you know, were getting restless, I'm, I'm here at the mom's crib doing the show. 
All right. That's cool, man. Whatever you got to do. Um, yeah, man. Um, Alvarez. Hey, what, what makes you think, uh, what, what makes you think, um, Floyd Mayweather wants to win this fight very convincingly, you know, um, if he wins this fight very convincingly, then he's throwing away about 40 million. I mean, hell. That's what I'm saying, man. That's what I'm saying. I kind of, I kind of, I mean, I kind of think, man, when he fought uh, Oscar, I kind of think that uh, maybe he carried Oscar a few rounds, man. Um, but but it just uh, Oscar, when he was fighting the guys, he was supposed to fight the tune-up fights to get the rematch. He just didn't look good enough to really um, warrant a rematch. Um, so I think that's pretty much what happened there. I don't think it even matters if this fight is close or a whitewash because of the business that it's going to generate. It's going to be a rematch, dude. There's just no one for Mayweather to fight. Who's he going to fight next? He's fighting his biggest fight right now. You can forget about regardless of whether, and y'all might think I'm crazy for this, but regardless of whether, you know, you think it's a rematch Canelo, it, he ain't gonna win this fight. Um, like he ain't gonna dominate Canelo. That's gonna be impossible. I've seen every one of his fights, and he ain't gonna be able to get in there and dominate. There's gonna be a little bit of fans that are gonna say, "Well, Canelo got his ass whooped." You know, you always gonna have the the Floyd Mayweather fans that are gonna say, "Oh yeah, he got his ass whooped. He he could he could have won by two rounds," and they're gonna say that he he dominated. That's what they're gonna say anyway. Then you're gonna have other fans. Canelo can lose by two rounds and they're gonna, you know, or 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 let or more, and they're gonna say Canelo made it a close fight. So, you know, the, the I think the the fan base of both of these fighters are so strong, like you're saying, that, that's probably the case, that they gonna say, you know, Canelo's fans are gonna say it's close enough, you know. And Floyd's going to say they dominated. So either way, and then at the same time, um, the way they fight, you know, the way Mayweather fights, the way the Canelo fights at a low pace, it's going to be very, um, sub, you know, subjective to um, criticism in terms of everybody's going to be basically disagreeing about who did better in the fight just because, you know, when you got low volume, One guy's going to say, yeah, but he didn't throw enough punches and Canelo was more effective or Floyd was more effective, but Canelo threw more punches. You always have to... I'm sorry, I have to to cut in there. The two pounds makes a huge amount of difference. The two pounds. Two pounds? Not Not for this fight, though, because, I mean, you know... Why not? Why not? Why not? Canelo is a young guy growing up, growing... He's going to be... He's potentially going to be a contender for being the first ever Mexican uh, middleweight champion. Um, I don't mean to be, like, you know, funny or anything, but Mexicans have never had a genuine... Well, they've never had a middleweight champion, right? Canelo is going to be potentially a middleweight world champion... And he's at 154. Uh, Mayweather's camp has made him uh, lose the two pounds, come 152 to fight this fight, to sacrifice a young, growing lion. Come on, man. And uh, caught to, uh, uh, Mayweather fought uh, Cotto at 154 and before with Delaware. So don't give me none of that, bro. Come on. This is I, a, a business, think, business deal. I don't think it's going to make the two pounds is going to make well, any more difference than it, than it ever has before. I, mean, I think it's going to make a huge difference for a guy who's so young growing up. He's young. He's 22. He's growing by the day. You know, yeah, you know he's like, I, if I was Canelo, I would, I would come in at, I would come in at 154. I would do what Mayweather did to uh, one Manuel Marquez uh, and uh, disregard the weight at the scales, pay the two million, and be yeah. fully fighting oh. fit, and then have the overall glory after. I would oh. like Canelo to have the best chance to in that fight, not be oh. sacrificed. Well, I agree with you. If the, if it's just two million, he's got to pay. Yeah, I agree that it's that a million. Be, it's a million for a pound. But but what if what if Canelo's been sandbagging on all these other fights? What if Canelo's just been coming in out of shape just because he knows he can just beat the guy? 
because he ain't fighting nobody. So what if he's... No, because he struggled to make weight against Matthew Hatton. He struggled to make weight. He's been struggling to make weight. He the, didn't he struggle make... versus Trout, Bal King, who doesn't let callers talk. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm passionate, bro. He he came in at 153 versus Austin Trout, which was yeah. the biggest fight of his career till date. So if he yeah. made weight below the limit for Trout, he's going to come in shape for Mayweather. Come on. Yeah, but I why just... have the two pound deficit then? If it's a one fifty four fight, then not because Mayweather not... wanted to catch weight. You know that concessions, concessions. Ah, man, I, yeah, I know it, and I don't like it. Uh, Mayweather think... wanted an advantage. But why though? Why the why? Same reason oh, Della Hoya wanted an advantage versus Mayweather when he made him move up to one fifty four and fight with ten ounce gloves. Yeah, but Della Hoya didn't want an advantage when he fought Felix Tito, Tito Trinidad when they both uh, broke records then. It that doesn't matter. Tr- Trinidad on, is in a Mayweather. Okay, well, there you go. And what about Lucas Matisse, say, then? Right? I told I said on your show before, he's getting frozen out now. No one's even talking about him. What? what what's happening with Danny Garcia? He's fighting September 14th, man. Are they fighting? Is it signed and sealed? No. no. Lucas is fighting, whether it's Danny or not. He's fighting September 14th. Yeah, and again, he's going to be disappointed. I mean, the guy has been... Fighting so hard, you know, knocking people out, and what's gonna happen? He's gonna get frozen out, and uh, well, oh my God, Danny Garcia, I'm sorry, Nez. I know, you know, you like. He's not gonna that, get but... frozen out, brother. He's got Al Heyman. He's got a fight signed already, man. How's he getting yeah, frozen out? Yeah, well, he ain't gonna get no big paydays like he deserves. I mean, he's a he's he's good for boxing. He's good for boxing. He's got Al Heyman. How is he not gonna get a big payday? What's wrong with you, Bal? Hey. Yeah, but no, 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 no. I mean, in a big fight, in, in a spectacular fight where he's recognized by the world, he will get it. Quick little diversion here. It's something I've been wanting to talk about on the show for a long time. I hear you guys discussing it um, about the, you know, the testing, the steroid testing, and all that. Yep. All right. My opinion on the steroid testing is, yeah, in one sense, you can look at it and say it needs to be done because. People are cheating, whatever. You know, that's a whole nother conversation. I mean, I can say I drank a protein shake and I got an edge. I mean, an edge is an edge. And a lot of people will say, well, well, that's just too big of an edge. Well, let's forget about that conversation. Let's talk about what testing and all this stuff has done to the sport of boxing in terms of politics. Oh, yes. Me personally, I think it's ruined. It's starting to ruin what Floyd Mayweather has done. It's starting to ruin the sport of boxing because now... 100% you got, agree. You got guys like... You got promotional teams that can say, okay, Lucas Matisse needs to be tested. And whether Lucas Matisse agreed to testing or whether he didn't agree, they can just say, well, he didn't agree to testing, which could be a total lie. It could just be a stall, just stalling out because they don't want to make the fight. Right. right, that 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 can't happen. Now, that can't we, happen, real we, boxing. If we, if, we, if Lucas agrees, there's no way that Team Garcia could say he didn't agree. But here's the thing, right? But at the moment, okay, they can say, "Well, I didn't, I didn't." They can word it to where they can they can say, "Well, well, I didn't really say he went, he didn't take the test." There was some confusion going on weeks down the road. Fight never gets made. Nobody thinks about it anymore. It's forgotten about. All I'm saying is, is yeah. Is well, because- I I don't I don't think that it's a bad thing that Mayweather brought testing into the sport because far too many people have came up dirty, man. The, the, it's the bottom line. There yeah, were a lot of cheaters out there. Nah, it's created an, uh, it's created uh, a further obstacle. What do you think about guys out there? I mean, what's your version? of an enhancement because I know I, I'm a bodybuilder and I have extensive personal experience with enhancements, you know, and my opinion is going to be different than someone who don't have experience, who just reads stuff. They don't have personal experience. But the well, thing about I, it is, all I can tell you is this. I don't have experience. All I know that there is a banned substance list. And that, and it, it gets very subjective. It oh, it's no sticky. subjection. It's black and white. If it's on the list and your piss is hot, 
you got pop. Yeah, but what what I'm saying is is that you know it's like what it sounds what like you're saying is that you're making excuses what I'm for fighters to use enhancement you got guys drugs. out there. You got guys out there that know how to take this stuff. Insulin, growth hormones, insulin, and things like that are not detectable. You you can't test for insulin. I don't. That's the most anabolic compound there is. I I, I don't know if you're necessarily right on that because uh, Vada Vada. Voluntary, uh, whatever it's called. Vic, help anti-doping me Anti-doping agency. Voluntary anti-doping agency. They do Will. the most stringent testing. They are the ones that have caught people the most. The problem with like certain drugs like insulin and other drugs of hormones, not anabolic steroids, because there's a difference between anabolic steroids and hormones. Anabolic steroids, some of them are hormones, but... There are hormones like GH, insulin, and stuff that are not steroids, but they're hormones that the body produces. Now, the thing about that is that sometimes, especially like with insulin, everyone's insulin levels are so vastly different, okay, depending on who they are, and they don't have a test that you can just test for the synthetics in your body. So they have to check insulin levels in the body. Everybody's insulin levels will be so vastly different that there's no way they can say, okay, well, you're 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 uh over what the normality you know well this is the thing this is the thing my man and, and we're gonna end it on this because every time we get into this drug conversation the show takes a nosedive but vada when you sign to fight they test you right there right now they have a standard so when they keep testing you everything has to match up to that first test if you didn't know yeah well, I'm just saying that some guys are getting away with it, and that's how I know because I'm in bodybuilding, and I know if you if you're gonna be pro, you're gonna have to be on. You're not gonna be able to be pro, and it's just like sometimes the public are so is so ignorant to what's going on on out there. You think you're competing on the top level in any sport? I don't care what it is. You're enhancing at some level on something. You're doing something. You're not gonna compete at that top level. You know what I'm saying? Without doing something enhancement. I don't know. Floyd's had some things going on with his hand. I know people were talking about those type of enhancements. I don't know where the line is. That's all I'm saying. Well, just to add to that, it's it's quite funny that when, when Nez, you mentioned as well that Brona never got tested in the Malinaji fight. And that's what according, you saw that. According to Polly Malinaji, he got tested. Brona never got tested. I'm going to go to a new caller because you guys are killing me with this testing shit. It's part of the sport. They need to enforce it. It should be mandatory. We should embrace it. There shouldn't be fighters cheating out there like like that MMA fighter, Alistair Overseer, Overeem, whatever the fuck his name is. The bottom line, he was over the testosterone limit by like 30 to 1. Him and Mickey Bay need to have drinks together. 224, you're live. Who's this? Yo, talk uh it's me, Tony. I'm calling back, bro. Hey, Ness. Don't talk. Oh, okay. You fall off for a minute. Hey, uh, I had to call in, man. Um, I know you don't want to want the show to take a, a nose dive, Ness. But is that caller on the line? Steroids? What? Hello. Yeah, he's on Hello. the line. Hey, real boxing. I guess they're talking to you. Yeah, hey, real boxing. Oh. Well, I, I want to know what exactly is your. What are you saying about the whole uh, steroid thing? Uh, are you saying that you you know it doesn't bother you? Don't mind you? You want to sort of like outlaw the testing of steroids? Is that what you're saying? No. Well, what I was basically just trying to point out was is that just a, you got to look at what it's doing to the politics of boxing. You know, we've had so many things that happened to the sport of boxing over the years that has watered down our sport. It hadn't just been testing, but it's been a lot of different things. Obviously, fighters used to fight 200 fights a career or 100-something fights. Now they fight 40 fights because it takes so long for a fight to be made. So it's just another thing to block the fights that we want to see happen. You know, um, that's part of it. The other part of it, as far as my knowledge on you know, supplements as a bodybuilder and knowing what other folks do not know 
is that you always got to assume that everyone is slipping through the cracks. You always got to assume that everybody at that top level is going to be trying to do something or doing something or getting away with it. So whether you have, that's like a two thing, two part thing. You got the fact that testing's ruined boxing to a degree. Um, and then you got the fact that if you test, you may not get them anyway. So it's kind of like a double negative to me. But like I said, Ness thinks that it should be in there. I mean, everybody has their own opinion. I just, from my point of view and everybody's point of view is different depending on what they know or what they've been through and experiences that they have. So I respect well, his point of view because that's where he stands, you know, and that's based on his feelings. But at the same time, I have my own point of view and how I feel about it. I, you know, I, I respect that. Um, I, I've never really, you know, I mean, I used to lift weights and all that other stuff, but, you know, I do a lot of reading on the stuff. I don't think you necessarily have to experience it firsthand to sit there and say you got some knowledge about it. The, the problem I have with with the steroid use and everything like that, you know, there is a difference, I, I will say that, but everybody does something at that level to enhance yeah. in any sport they, to enhance their performance. Yeah. You know, whether it's, uh, you know, Lucas Matisse popping those pills or whatever, but the problem with this stuff, though, it's not enhancing these people. It's transforming them, man. I mean, right. it, it's, it's not a thing where, like I said, you're taking a Red Bull or something like that, yeah. get you hyped up. and Some of this shit, it's like, it's making somebody that they're not. It's like a total fraud. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, know, I, I don't I know, know how else. Tone, you killing me, man. You killing me. You guys are eating up like half an hour on this PD me, shit. Let me, let me, I'm getting comments no, all hey, day. People don't want to talk PDs, hey, but that's man. A, let me just but, say one more thing. But that's, that's a reality, bro. That's a reality. Yeah, we can't be ignorant I, to this. I, I, I think it, this is crazy, but I think they should, when you do a fight, I think they should put one guy in a camp, another guy in a camp, monitor him, make sure. I think they should have testing, but they need to do it the right way. Have people come by a monitor, do the testing, make sure both guys are getting the same amount of nutrition. You know what I'm saying? The same type of nutrition. That way the poor man ain't sitting there eating a cheeseburger while this guy's got a nutritionist over here. You see what I'm saying? Because that makes, if you know nutrition and bodybuilding, that makes a heck of a difference when a guy's eating something and the other guy can't afford to eat what he's eating or a nutritionist with the knowledge and all that stuff, you know, because you got the guys like Mayweather, they got all, they got the money to be able to hire a nutritionist and, and know all that kind of stuff. And it makes a huge difference. So if you put both fighters in sort of the same situation and that, and then test them. Yeah, I would agree to that. As long as everybody, you know, you start monitoring other things besides just the drugs you know, what are these guys enhancing on? What are they taking? It'd be, it would be equal. Now, I don't know if that would be practical, but that's just how, how I would do it. No, but what would it, I mean, what would you draw the line if you, if you Hello? <laughs> hey, Seth. <laughs> Yo, y'all killing hey, me, man. We done with that. We done with I, that. Hey, Ness, Ness. Can, I, can I say something, though? Can I say something, Ness? Hey, I'll catch y'all guys later, man. I, I'll see you later, Ness. All right, brother. We'll talk at you. Hey, Ness, man, I, I know that nobody likes hearing about the steroids, but, I mean, that's the reality of it, man. I mean, yeah, that's it, a reality, it's like but to we be, don't got to talk about I know, it, man. It, like, it's not, it's not entertaining, it because but it's a, it's the, a real concern. Like, don't what, care, what's like, next, listen. man? You're going to let... Margarita come in the ring with loaded gloves and some shit like that. I don't see too much of a difference because, like I said, I mean, these steroids, the, the, well, they're hey, cheap, hey, motherfuckers, hey, man. There's steroids you know in saying? every sport, brother. It's a problem in every sport. It's, that's just what it in is, every, man. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And, and like I said, boxing, motherfucker get killed. Now, if you come out and say, like, this, the other guy, I'm not really sure what is complete with his point. If you sit there and say, I don't really care, if there's steroids, that's one thing. Okay, if you just sit there and say, I don't give a fuck. You know, they're going to do steroids, they're not going to do. But if you sit here, I don't want to hear the argument that, oh, it, it, that it doesn't affect you that much. And it Dude, it transforms your ass. You know what I'm saying? But, like I said, bro, everybody got an opinion on it. I'm, I'm just 
saying that it's confirmed for me. You know, I, I listen to your show all the time, every week, and, I, you know, I want to know that Lucas Latisse is real, man. I want to know that this motherfucker knocking motherfuckers out, that's real. You know what I'm saying? I don't want him to go in the ring against Danny Garcia because I'm a Danny Garcia fan. And I don't want to see him knock him the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, how did he look when he fought Alexander and Judah? Was he the machine in those fights? Yeah, man, but we can't make assumptions, man. He's going to have to take the test. No, no. I, so no, I'm not saying that, out. man, but, you, I mean, you got to think, man. Like, I mean, he did drop. Alexander and Judah, so I mean the power was he, still there. No, no, I'm, I'm not saying that, man. I'm saying that I don't trust none of the motherfuckers. Unless <laughs> you can sit there and say, "Yeah, I, that, I, I agree to the blood testing and the stuff like that." I don't trust none of them because I, I believe with as much money as at stake and as hard a sport as boxing is. Yeah, but who's gonna? I mean, it, who's gonna pay for that though? Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I hear what you're saying. It's not practical. You know, for I, I think for the championship fights, I think you, uh, Bob Irma was on your channel, Ness. I don't know if it was you or Vic interviewed him. Say it was like twenty thousand or something like that. What to, to do the testing? You know what I'm saying? But like I said, man, I, I don't trust none of the fighters, man. Unless you can sit there and say you're gonna take the test, because there's too much money at stake, man. You know, everybody wants Tone, to make man. that, Tone. Make it to that level. Too much shit going on in boxing for us to still be talking PDs. You right. are killing us. <laughs> hey, can I talk Danny Garcia then? Oh, yeah! Nah, I'm talking, I'd rather talk PD <laughs> as Danny Garcia. Hey, 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 I stop, tweeted you, Vic. Stop. Hello? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Hey, v, uh, Vic, I, I, tweet, uh, I tweeted you last week, man. We went sort of back and forth about uh, Lucas and uh, Danny Garcia. You saying that Garcia wants more money? Well, I mean, uh, the rumor started, I don't know how long ago. It was uh, $4 million, then someone said it was $5 million. I mean, I, I flat out heard that Danny doesn't want the fight. That's what I heard. Okay. Right. Whether it's, it's going to take him more it's money really- to get him into I mean, I, I'm not paying for it, so I mean, whatever money it takes to make the fight, it's not my business. I'm not making any money off of does it. Al Hay- does Al Heyman want to make that fight? Uh, <laughs> talking to uh, to uh, who we talked to Watson. No, talk, like say, talking to Richard Schaefer. Richard Schaefer said that uh, Al Heyman does wants both of them to fight, but you know that he wants them to fight. Yeah. Oh, okay. See, that yeah, says a t- lot. Talking to the other that. guy, he says it doesn't want it, they don't want it to happen now. I don't know. So you getting. You're getting two different stories. Oh, okay. You see that that Al Heyman, he treats Boner a lot different from Danny. You notice that? Chemo, mute yourself, Chemo. Sounds like it's raining over there. Hello? No, that's not me, dude. Oh, that's you. That's definitely hey. you. <laughs> hey, but you see that Al Heyman, he, he treats Broner a little bit different. You think that... That Al Heyman was how, how does he hold on? Hold on. How does he treat Broner different? First of all, how do you see that he treats Broner different when nobody even sees Al Heyman? I'm fucking in mad fights and I only seen Al Heyman twice in my life. I, I ain't gotta see him. I ain't gotta see him to see what his work is. Just look at what we put we put Broner in with. Okay, he he put him with Malinaji because you know contrary to what a lot of people think, belts mean something. So he put him in against. Paulie Malinaji, who I like, who's a soft, uh, a soft touch, but he can't hit, bro. He's a nice guy, but can't hit. But what are you so saying? Him, Garcia and I'm Matisse got in soft he, touches too. Okay, yeah, but okay. I well, mean, Garcia, yeah, Garcia fought Nate Campbell for God's sakes, yeah, and Lucas Matisse him. fought Mike Dallas Jr. for God's sakes. Yeah, but who do you think Broner's gonna fight next, though? Broner's supposed to fight Maidana next. Is that going to happen? But Maidana may price himself out. He's already coming out in the media saying that he's not taking the Broner fight for a little bit of money. He wants a lot of money. Now, you got to remember, Marcos Maidana was getting 250000 to fight Jesus Soto Carras. So what do you right. think? He's worth a million dollars? Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah. you know what? I, mean, I, I think I'm, he's I'm, worth a million. I'm all for 
for I'm all for guys saying I'm all for guys making the most money for their fight. You know, Alvarado was on Twitter saying, you know, I, I want to get paid for this fight. I, I'm all for that. But, right. I mean, my I don't know who handles my Donna's Twitter. My Donna was like, uh, yeah, Broner, I better fight Broner, but for the right price. I don't remember what it was. Like he, oh, he hey, was on, he was on both edges of the side. Uh, he was on both sides. When hey, Alvarado Vic. flat out said, yeah, I'll fight Rusan, but just pay me. You know what I mean? Hey, Vic. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you, yeah, you posted something about uh, Lucas. I'm glad you said that. You posted something about uh, Lucas Batiste. Remember that tweet that Batiste supposedly sent out? Was that really his Twitter, or did somebody? Because it was Which like one? I mean, Batiste there's like two. There's like two uh, Matisse Twitters that are fake. Lucas don't got a Twitter. We already asked him that. No, no, there was one confirmed by his uh, his team. But who's the one who said that Mark uh, Garcia's a bitch or something like that? He yeah, that's scared. the fake one. That's the fake one. That's. Right, that's the fake one. Okay, okay. It's one of yeah, okay, okay. That's the fake one. That's the fake one. Tone, let me get to some like calls, Tone. Tone. Let me get to some calls. You just rambling right. tonight. <laughs> All right, peace, brother. Chemo, what up? Chemo. I think Chemo went back into the shower. Chemo from yeah, Holland. Yeah, can you hear me? Chemo from Holland. Get away from the microphone. Chemo. CT, what up? Yo. What's going on, Ness? What's up, brother? Chilling, man. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about, you know, the British type heavyweights, but I'm looking forward to that David Hay and uh, Tyson Fury fight. I'm I'm right in the same car with you, brother. We driving to that fight together, man, because I was talking about that early. I'm happy this fight got made. I'm excited. It's gonna it's gonna definitely tell us something about um Tyson Fury, because we've seen him go down by Cunningham, and uh, it's also going to tell us something about David Hay. Could Tyson Fury be the guy to finally get rid of David Hay? Because if you lose to a guy like Tyson Fury that has very few fights, only fought two names, which is Chisora and Steve Cunningham, who's a you know lifelong cruiserweight, and if you lose to him, there's no way David Hay could talk himself back into a big fight. He's going to have to fight, you know, guys like Seth Mitchell, Jonathan Banks, Deontay Wilder, uh, Jennings, just to get back in the mix. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to ask you, too, uh, what do you think about HBO and Bob Arum going against Ray Vial like this? I, I've probably never seen this, you know what I mean? A dude, when a, a good fight, you know, the way he did it, you know, Shut the guy out, and he's not even getting the recognition that he should get. What do you think about that? What I think about this is for all those people that hate Floyd Mayweather and say that Mayweather, you know, is crazy, He's this is Mayweather Bob Arum all over again. He doesn't know yeah. how to promote boxers, man. He's a hater. He's a hater? What are you talking about, too? He's not a fucking hater, Vic. How is he a hater? Because the, his God didn't win. That's why. Oh, my God. He just said that no no network is going to exile my fighter. Did you not hear that? Like, No, no network is going to exile my fighter. I don't see him pulling his fucking cards off of HBO either. Yo, Ness, check, check the board. Uh, I think uh, he's calling it. He ain't calling. Or maybe I gave him the wrong number. Hold I'm up. sure he probably did. That's my fault. He's right <laughs> on your screen. Man, I can't see. I'm blind, dog. Um, yeah, man. I don't know what Vic's talking about, CT. What do you call that? You beat the shit out of Donair, and you telling me HBO don't want you? I don't even believe that. Because remember, the head of HBO is Ken Hirschman now. The same guy that made the Bantamweight tournament. Yeah, I mean, so I, you I made want... a tournament with little guys. Now you got... The little guy king and you don't want him? Get out of here. That's Bob Aaron work. Bob Aaron been saying, man, Bob Aaron told me in my face and it's on my video for Rigging Dow to get promoted, Fidel Castro got to come promote him. Come on, man. He never liked him. It's, it's hard to promote Cubans, Ness. Man, he never liked them, man. Uh, Stop and lying, what, what, what's, and It's just hard to promote Cubans, dog. I mean, it's the hard. Biggest, the biggest Asian I ever met in my life. What's up, Kimster? 
Hey, you know what? And I took, I, I got this big by taking PEDs. Let's talk about that for another half hour. Oh, my God. They were <laughs> killing me. They were killing me with the PED talk, man. And, and you know what it is? I mean, it, it comes from a healthy place. People don't want to see Danny Garcia get crushed unless it's truly him being crushed by a guy that's, you know, not on anything. No, I mean, listen, we should all fight for a level playing field. But you're right. I mean, listen, I, there's a time and a place to talk about everything. Uh, but there's a lot of boxing to talk about, too. And at the end of the day, you know, when you watch shows or listen to shows like this, or whether it's Jim Lampley's fight game, when it's all said and done, guys, isn't it about the fights and the fighters? Absolutely. Yes. So, guys, I, I've been hearing this debate. I was able to talk to Aram today. I actually covered this is how bad the Cold War has gotten. They have dueling press conferences now in the same day in the same city. And I was actually stupid enough to try to go to both, which I did. So I got news and notes for, from both of them. Um, I asked Bob Aram about the situation regarding HBO and Rigando. And I think Bob has decided to dig in his heels and tell HBO, wait a minute, this is unprecedented. You, you, you kind of made us take the Rigando Donaire fight. He wins the fight, and you're penalizing us by saying, wait a minute, you don't want him on the air. And I said this on Twitter yesterday, Ness, that I was with the top-ranked executive about two, three weeks ago for the Bradley Marquez press conference at the Beverly Hills Hotel, and I was told by somebody straight out, HBO does not want Rigano. They want nothing to do with them. Now, people have to understand, Vic and Ness, Bob never said that I'm going to exile him or that I'm not going to use him. He just said HBO, and he told Dan Raphael, every time we bring up Rigano, they want to vomit. But Bob has been the one guy that's been more than willing to finance careers once HBO or Showtime says we don't want them. And so... I think it went from him being exiled to HBO, going to Macau November 23rd, and now Bob Arum says he believes that when Mikey Garcia gets his date in November on HBO, Rigando will be the co-feature that night. So that's where we stand as we speak. But, but Kim, I mean, all the years hey, Steve, you got hey, in this Steve, sport. Let, let me jump in real quick. N- Ness uh, just stated that uh, Bob Arum doesn't know how to promote boxers. I, well, that, you know, here's the whole thing, though. Before Bob became top Mexican, people have to understand for about 25 years, his, bo- his business was based on African-American fighters, a lot of them who were boxers. Yeah. So, uh, you know, does he prefer to go with the Latin marketplace right now with fan-friendly fighters? I think everyone does. Um, you know, if you look at what Bob Aaron has signed recently, whether it is Rigondo or whether it's Kareem Mayfield, he, it's not like every single one of these guys is Eric Morales. That's not necessarily true. And if you look at the history of Bob Arum, you know, Flash Gordon used to derisively call him Pop Plantation and Massa Bob, if you go back. But I do think that there are issues with Rigando guys that aren't always easy to solve. Number one, that guarantee that HBO has to pay him because of the contract he has with top rank, that makes it problematic. I mean, it's one thing to say, yes, I want to fight on HBO, but then what if you're asking for a million dollars a fight? So then here comes another issue, Ness. Let's say you then become the opening bout to Mikey Garcia, and you have to pay Rigando, let's say, 750000 which I think that's what he got for the other fight with Donaire. And let's say if he says now, well, I want a million dollars. Well, if you're paying the co-feature guy who's opening up the broadcast a million, well, Mikey Garcia and his management are going to say, okay, but we're the main event. So there are issues here that exist. Now, this is not unprecedented, guys. Remember uh, Vladimir and Vitaly Klitschko, who were dominant but not necessarily exciting. There wasn't a great pool of talent. If you look in the last four years, how many Klitschko fights have they done? And we're talking about, guys who, number one, drew very well in New York at the Garden, and number two, and they actually did good ratings. So this is not anything yeah, yeah. that's minute, exclusive minute, to Guillermo Rigondeau. You can't compare Vladimir Klitschko or Vitaly to Rigondeau because they never had a donaire. Outside of Vitaly fighting Lennox Lewis, there's never been a great heavyweight fight. Donaire versus Rigondeau was a great fight. 
Well, and a great fight been... or a great matchup, Ness, because I, I said this before, uh, and great other matchup. people can vouch for me. I said going into these fights, I've always thought Donero was overrated. I, I never had him up all that high. I mean, people see, and I, let me just say one thing. The Donaire rigando fight, I thought stunk because both guys stunk it out, and I actually think Donaire doesn't get enough credit for fumigating that arena that night. He, I thought, was actually more or less the cause of that fight being as uneventful as it was because we knew he had to be the aggressor. And people seem to forget about Donaire. In his last four out of five fights, going back to Omar Narvaez, people have booed, they have whistled, and there have been cat calls. And I remember this, I know, I remember this vividly. After the first Rio Alvarado fight, guys, by the third round of the Nishioka fight, that became the world's most expensive walkout bout because people were leaving, literally in the third and fourth rounds. Donaire, to me, I thought was a great job of Bob and HBO really fooling everybody into thinking this should be the fighter of the year and he's one of the best fighters of the year. When against Vasquez, there were boos. Against Matubala, people were booing. Against um, Nishioka, people were booing. And then he beat the ghost of Jorge Arce. So, I mean, again, you, I don't disagree with you. Don't air is a great victory, but we're talking about the Klitschko's, specifically Vladimir, who is the dominant heavyweight of the last five years, and they haven't done all his fights. So, yeah, but, I, you, you but, can but go Vladimir both ways on that. never had a don't air. He never had that. He never fought the number one and the number two, unless you want to count David Hay. And that he, we all know how that turned out. All right, about as uneventful as the Donair Rigondeaux fight, though. No, absolutely though. not. No, that's so unfair to say that Rigondeaux Donair was anything equal to that horrible fight with Hay. <laughs> really? I, to me, one, one is gonorrhea, one is syphilis. They, they were both kind of bad, Ness, weren't they? <laughs> no, I, I, I guess, I guess it's because I was saying it. Uh, a lot more aggressively than you, that Donaire was a bum in my eyes, and he was getting... A bum? Well, Ness, a bum. See, now you're going to... Well, no, Ness, well, I'm well, glad well, you're not exaggerating see, anything here, Ness. Well, no, no, this is the problem. You know, I have a problem with calling fighters bums because I don't really use letter grades, but he was... To use a letter grade to be fair to him and so the fans can understand, I never thought he was an A fighter, and I always said Donaire would beat him so that fight was entertaining to me uh, when, when Rigondeaux beat him. Excuse me. No, me too. I mean, yes, I said from the beginning, as soon as they signed the fight, I said, bad fight for Donaire. Uh, I had Rigondeaux winning that fight from day one. Um, and I think if they fought ten times, he'd probably win eight or nine. And I think there are significant technical and fundamental flaws within the game of Nonito Donaire. I just don't like fighters who don't know how to work off a jab. And, and to me, if you really look at the career arc of Donaire, he threw two big left hooks five years apart against Darchinian and then uh, against Fernando Montiel, and the rest have been a lot of easy hand-picked fights, and some of them have been very boring, to be honest with you. Uh, I, I think that Donaire has been the recipient of a lot of kudos because he's delivered a few highlight reel knockouts, but is he as consistent and as steady as Rigando? No, he's not, but Ness, you have to understand, HBO is not necessarily in the boxing business. They're in the programming slash entertainment business, and Rigando, the problem is he does not have much of a fan base. Now, the hardcore fan may watch every single one of his rounds and be absolutely entertained, but there's the other 99% of America that may turn that fight off after four rounds. And so that, that's the issue that HBO has. In my opinion, I don't think HBO should be in the business of banning any fighter. I think they should go by a fight-by-fight -fight basis and say, we'll take that fight, but we won't take that fight. And at that point, that's when Bob Arum has to spend his own money and then start sticking Rigando on some of these undercards. But, Steve, help me out here. What is the difference between Rigando and Mayweather? Easy. Even stylistically, you can make an argument that they are mirror images. We'll not argue that. But remember, Mayweather does not take a network license fee. He's not on a welfare check. He creates his own business. And you can argue that his appeal is based on everything outside of the ring. The ring. 
And I would agree. But remember, he's on pay-per-view, so he derives his own income. He created his own business, and he has a franchise. He does not need a network license fee from HBO, Showtime, CBS, PBS, or, or CNN. Yeah, but Steve, he, the problem with just, that... But ha- and the personality, that's the key, though. He has a certain personality and a persona that sells to the American public. But the problem with that is you're talking now. You're talking... 10 years later. I'm talking about before Gotti, when he was all on HBO. Well, I don't disagree with that, but remember, and this is where I think it becomes cultural. I think where Rigando is hurt is the fact that he does not speak English and he's not American. And where I do feel bad for Rigando, is, and I am going to write about this this weekend, is that I think there's a cultural bias. I think there's a terrible double standard that if HBO says, well, you're boring, so we don't want to use you. I'll say, fine, that's your prerogative. But Ness and Vic, do you think he is far from the only boring guy that's not exactly the most entertaining fighter on that network? And I just want to throw this in because I'm such a huge fan of, of Andre Ward. Uh, <laughs> no, you? <laughs> I'm such a huge fan of Andre Ward. Doesn't that fall around the same, you know, the same guidelines, they're pushing Andre Ward, they're bringing him on you know, every telecast, and they're trying to make him their guy, but he's not exactly the most entertaining guy. No, he's not, and we have that debate now about entertainment versus effectiveness, and Andre Ward, though, gets a, I don't say a pass, but it's different because he is English, and he uh, English-speaking, and he is American. And that does make a difference. And you're right, he has been anointed by the current HBO leadership led by Ken Hirschman as the face and the future of HBO boxing. Now, never mind, in a year and a half, he's fought eight rounds, exactly, eight or nine rounds. And, you know, and I just find it maddening from the Rigando standpoint that there's another Cuban, Yuri Gamboa, who to me, unless he's getting knocked down, I mean, you want to talk about a guy that could put people to sleep, to have Canadian people and fans boo you, who are the nicest, most amiable people. These aren't Mexicans at the StubHub Center. These are Canadians who are very, very amiable, boo you, uh, on June 8th, yet he pretty much has a future on HBO. That's the double standard that I find troubling as it relates to Rigando. You know, I want to be ignorant and say it's because he doesn't know English, but then you got to think, you know, they, they had Canelo on there a bunch of times. I, I just don't get it why they're... Ah, uh, but Ness, but remember with Canelo, that guy did huge ratings. And the, he, he is Mexican. And so you look at our country's demographics, you know, listen, in 50 years, this is going to be Mexico. I mean, let's just look no, at no, the demographic no, numbers and the cultural you. shift in our country. And if you look at some of the, uh, Canelo's ratings and the way he drew, going back to the Matthew Hatton fight where he did 13,000 fighting not Ricky Hatton in Anaheim, and listen, that was not an exciting fight, but from a programming standpoint, you needed to have Canelo Alvarez. You don't necessarily need Guillermo Rigando if you're a network. No, no, no. I'm agreeing with you. I'm saying that I wanted to be ignorant for a second and say it's because he didn't know Spanish, but clearly... That's not the reason because they have guys like Canelo on their network. I just don't get what they don't like. I mean, the guy has 12 fights, 8 knockouts. That's a high ratio. He's getting the job done. I don't I don't get why they hate this guy. You know, the, the thing about Rigando is that I can appreciate what he does. Um, from a network perspective... The way I would deal with Rigando is I would say to Bob Arum and to Guillermo Rigando and his manager Gary Hyde, we're not necessarily going to make you an HBO fighter, but we'll have you on HBO in the right circumstances. If you fight a certain guy, a certain caliber of fighter, and more importantly, a certain style, okay, then I would love to see you on my networks. Otherwise, you guys are on your own. And quite frankly, I would do that for every fighter. Unless your name is Floyd Mayweather or Manny Pacquiao and maybe two or three other guys, I, I don't get into long-term contracts with fighters because I think it's been proven the fighter needs the network. The network doesn't necessarily need most fighters. But I would say this about Rigando. I do think the way Bob Aaron was talking today that I think that Rigando um, will be on HBO. The question is, against who, and I, I do think that there is some pressure on Rigando to do his part. He's made it clear, Ness, I don't care about the fans. Well, that's kind of troubling because I was there in Dallas Stadium, and I 
forgot which Pacquiao fight it was at, at Cowboy Stadium That's against Cordoba. That fight was so bad that if you had to either buy a beer or piss that beer out, you could have. that was the fight that everyone was either going to the beer line or the restroom in droves by the seventh round. I'll never forget it. Yeah, but Steve, um, if we give, let's say we give Rigondeaux the same caliber of fighters that Golovkin is getting, well, Rigondeaux's a monster and he's a knockout king too. That's not necessarily untrue, but there is something about Golovkin that's much more offensive. And there, there been, listen, there have been other times. Golovkin, to me, as much as I like him, we have to pump the brakes a little bit. I, the Matthew Macklin fight, to me, is just the start. And I'd like to see him fight other guys, namely Martin Murray, Peter Quillen, if you can ever work out the politics. But Golovkin as a whole resonates with the public a lot more because he's telegenic. I think... But, Steve, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you really want to see him fight Martin Murray? The guy Who else that is there, arguably... I mean, seriously. I, I mean, John Mugabe is not walking through that door, Ness. Name me a better guy right now that you can realistically get on HBO. I have no name, but what would Mar- what is the difference between Martin Murray and Matthew Macklin? They have the same two losses. I don't disagree, but I, do you don't think Martin Murray may have beaten Sergio Martinez in his last fight? I think I he may have beaten Martinez and Sturm. It doesn't mean anything. He didn't. Technically, he made it too close. And both times, he admitted to saying, well, maybe I didn't do enough. If so that, that's a, a good boy. Option. Look, give you know what that is? Then, that's yeah. a good boy in the making. All he's waiting for now is to get knocked out by Golovkin, scrape himself off the floor and say, well, I didn't do enough, but I'm a good boy. Okay, so then, Ness, give me a better alternative that's realistic. Is that there isn't anything realistic. There isn't. There isn't anything realistic. I would love him to fight Gil, which I would give him a lot of credit for because Gil convincingly beat, you know, Sturm. Um, but, Ness, let's go back on the history of Gil. When Gil fought Sturm last year in what was a unification bout, the WBA clearly said the winner of this bout must fight Golovkin. Yeah, he ducked next. Golovkin. I know where you're going with that. And you know I what? Know. He flat out said, sorry, I'm going to vacate this belt and take the path <laughs> of least resistance. Yeah. I, I, I know where you're let's going say, with that. Ness, let's say Barker wins. Eddie Hearns already said flat out that he's not going to fight. <laughs> he already said hell no. He already said hell no. <laughs> They're going to go out there, and they're going to go on the European UK tour of Andy Lee, Matthew Macklin, and whoever's out there. You know it, and I know it, Vic. That's what they're going to do. Yeah, but that's Absolutely. see, that's the problem. I mean, I, again, you you're a guy that knows more than us in terms of the money and stuff. But that's where I have a problem with fighters and their promoters wanting to stick with a network. Go to Showtime, fight Quillen. That's a unification. <laughs> You know what? I, I don't disagree with you, but the way the politics and the way the allegiances, and this is one of the things that's maddening about the business, is you're right. When people say that we are a free agent and we're operating on both sides of the street, and I, you know everyone thought that a couple of months ago when HBO made it very clear that Golden Boy slash Heyman was no longer welcome on our airwaves, people thought that the third-party promoter would have that ability. But you know what? The more... I talk to people, and the more of the decisions that I see, even if you are an Artie Palulo or a Dan Goosen or a Gary Shaw, once you pledge your allegiance to a network, you are pretty much stuck there because then it affects your other fighters if you jerk them around. Now, is that right? No, but we don't live in a perfect world. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. Hey, Kim, I just want to move on a little bit. Uh... Because uh, the people want to know, I don't know if you have any updates on this. I know the 140 fight we all want to see. Garcia Matisse, anything new on that? You know, I have been told by people at Golden Boy for since the Tuesday of the L.A. portion of the Mayweather-Canelo press conference, they felt as though that they were very, very, very close. In fact, Richard Schaefer went on record, and I've talked to other people. And it was described, and I described it as first and goal from the one-yard line, right? Well, they still haven't crossed the end zone yet, and I don't know what it is. I mean, I was told that about two and a half weeks ago, 
that Matisse has signed his name on the dotted line. And as Ness said earlier, he is guaranteed to be on that September 14 card. Right now, they are waiting on Danny Garcia. And I, I spoke to some Golden Boy representatives today at their press conference to announce the Mara Santa Cruz doubleheader at Olvera Street, and they said, Steve, we're still working on it. You know, there are people that swear up and down that this fight is going to happen, that it's a done deal. And I'll, you know, until it's a done deal, it's not a done deal. And I don't know what is the holdup here. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, supposedly drug testing. There were rumors that Danny Garcia wanted to break into Fort Knox to make this fight. Uh, but I got to tell you, there comes a point in time where you got to pull the trigger now because we are dealing with September 14th. And I, I'm just, again, I've said this from the beginning, guys, as it related to Garcia Matisse, seeing is believing. Wait, but Steve, the question I want to ask, do you think that it's Danny's fault? Because our listeners, I don't know if it's because they know that I like Danny or something. In their eyes, it's all Danny's fault. They're pointing the finger at poor Garcia. You know, I, 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 you know, without knowing exactly what's going on on both ends, all I can tell you is this, that someone at Golden Boy with a, a very intimate knowledge of what is going on between the two sides has told me, Steve, Matisse had signed his deal. It's that simple. And you know, listen, if Danny Garcia does not accept this fight, um, do you do I think that he'll be known as Danny Duck? I think you've got to live with that for a while now. Does that mean that the fight can't happen in four or five months? Of course not. But I get this is my gut feel. If it doesn't happen, and again, I'm hoping that I'm wrong. Let's say it doesn't happen. What I believe is the mindset of the Garcia family and Al Heyman is that if you're Danny Garcia, you're starting to build a reputation, you're undefeated, which Matisse isn't, and you're in that neighborhood between 140 and 147, I think that the Garcias think to themselves, why do we need to face Matisse and take that risk when if we just wait six to eight months, we might be fighting Floyd Mayweather for a lot more money? That's what I think may be holding this fight up, is that specter that they just might be in the Mayweather sweepstakes and they don't need to fight Lucas Matisse. Now, how real is the drug testing? You know what's funny? I, when that rumor came out, and I said, you know what? Any fighter that wants to legitimately do random testing, and again, I don't want to delve into a big thing and devolve your show again. Um, I asked anyone and everyone that was associated with this promotion at Golden Boy from Richard Schaefer on down, and I said, is drug testing an issue? They said no. They said no. So I, I take them. Now, could they be lying to me? Of course. They're in boxing. Everyone lies. But if you take it at face value, I was told that drug testing was not a hindrance to this fight being made. So how does the drug testing happen when Lucas Matisse is not leaving Argentina for training camp? Well, that's one of the things that we have to work out. If we're going to move forward and have real drug testing, which is random testing, which, which is unannounced and also has blood and urine, other athletes across the world that are in the Olympic sports that live under the WADA code, they're from all sorts of different countries. So, you know, if you sign up for it, would you have to work out certain provisions on when you'd be available and, and in terms of the cost and also in terms of the liability? Again, this is a very, very deep issue that we're only, we've only dipped our toe into it. But I, the fact that someone's in Argentina... You know what, last I checked, the Wright brothers created airplanes. You can easily fly over there um, and, and make sure that the guys are tested. But, uh, but, Ness, going back to the original question, I was told by Richard Schaefer and some other people that drug testing was not a hurdle to this fight being made. I don't know. I know that. Doesn't the promoter have to front the bill for the drug testing? Yes. But remember, in this in this instance, though, we have to understand Garcia and Matisse. They are both under the Golden Boy and Al Heyman umbrella. You would think that they would be theoretically neutral. Um, so that's the way I look at it. And, you know, listen, I think a decision is going to have to be made here soon. You know, Vic and Ness, I was told last Tuesday, uh, after that press conference had kind of ended and everyone's doing their one-on-ones, Richard Schaefer told me right to my face, he goes, Steve, that's my number one priority is to make Garcia Matisse finalize it, and I think we can have it by the end of the week. Well, guys, we're at the end of the week of the week after the week. So I, I have yeah, no idea what's going on. I emailed 
Richard Schieffer saying, do you have any news? Are you going to be at the press conference today? And Richard Schieffer says he's in Europe, which I take it as that he's on other business that does not involve Danny Garcia or Lucas Matisse. Well, that's what I heard after the, the LA press conference, that uh, Danny Garcia had like a deadline or something. If not, they were going to move with another opponent for Lucas being on that undercard. Mm-hmm. Now, Steve, at this point, isn't it too late? Isn't it? I mean, regardless of what they're telling you, let's look at it from a business point. Why are we going to put it on nine fourteen when clearly that fight is going to sell? No. Lucas or Danny aren't going to sell any extra pay-per-views. Yes, I couldn't agree with you more. That's why when I first heard the rumors, I thought it had to be just a rumor. Because you're right, and if you talk to people within the business that have done pay-per-views at the highest levels, and you talk to people on the television side, now us hardcore guys, we care about the undercard because, let's face it, we watch streams in the middle of Saturday afternoon, okay? But we're degenerates, as Larry Merchant would say. The general casual fan that really pumps up those numbers above 500,000 to 2 million, you know, Nancy in New Jersey or Bill in Iowa, they're not watching till about, what, 9.15 at night um, or at least around midnight on uh, East Coast time till Floyd Mayweather or Manny Pacquiao are walking into the ring. I, I know for a fact that there have been studies that show clearly that undercard fights do not really affect the pay-per-view buys one way or the other. And let's look at the history of some of the most successful pay-per-view buys in the history of boxing that involved guys like Oscar De La Hoya, Manny Pacquiao, and Floyd Mayweather. We had a lot of Butterbean and Mia St. John on those undercards. Let's be honest. We weren't getting a lot of, you know, Simon Brown, Maurice Blocker. Those Don King undercards, as great as they were, what sold the main event was guys like Mike Tyson and Julio Cesar Chavez. So you're right, Ness. That aspect of it never really made sense to me. And then, and then we have to think about the fact that Mayweather's getting 41 million, mm-hmm. Canelo's getting anywhere between eight and 11. Where's the money to pay Garcia and and, and Lucas? Right. So that's another issue, Ness. That's a great point. So right now we're talking about a main event that costs 50 million dollars. Okay. <laughs> Right off the top, people have to understand the undercards. Literally, Ness, if, if Golden Boy or Top Rank wanted to be put me and you in together with the fight and pay us $2, and if we agreed to it, they would do it because the undercard on a pay-per-view is not under the auspice of a network license fee. That comes out of a budget that is set by the fighters or their promotions. So I have a hard time believing that if that fight, each guy, whether it's Matisse and Garcia, let's say that fight costs 3 to $4 million dollars. That is an awful lot to pay for an undercard fight. And when you're talking about a bottom line, which the pay-per-view is all about the economic bottom line, you're right. Why would they do that fight um, on that particular date, knowing that if you're going to spend that much money, that you could literally put that fight on anywhere else and have a network pay for it? I, that, that just never really made sense to me, Ness. Plus, if you just push this fight back some more, you can put it in an actual venue. Clearly, if you put it on the East Coast, you're going to get over 13000 without a right. doubt. And that's another issue. Um, most of the – you know this and I know this. When you go to a Mayweather or Pacquiao fight, nobody really shows up to that arena till about 7 o'clock. I mean, I've been there when the pay-per-view starts at about 6.07, so you get to the first bout, no matter who it is. And what do you see in the background? Rows and rows of empty seats, right? And it's not till about the middle of the third bout that the real boxing fans decide to show up, but then they can't even get tickets. So the guys with the cops and the gamblers and the high rollers, they don't really care about Lucas Matisse. I'd be willing to bet that they don't even know who Lucas Matisse is. So I do think that you're right. In terms of the interest that you are sparking for that event, a fight like Matisse Garcia, I think it's cannibalized by the shadow of Canelo Alvarez and Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, I, I just don't believe that this fight is happening now. It doesn't make any business sense. I remember after Lucas Matisse, Lamont Peterson, uh, you know, Schaefer said there was a bunch of venues on the East that were tied up. 
uh, after Zab Judah turning down the Lamont Peterson fight or Peterson turning down that fight, DC is out. So there's nothing open on the East. And I think they're just stringing us on by saying, yeah, we're working on it. We're working on it. But they're not working on shit. Yeah, and I think it's time that they come clean and decide to put on other guys. And let's just be honest. That fight, just judging by the crowd, and I think you were there at one of the ones in New York or Jersey, that fight, Canelo and Mayweather, I think it's going to do two million buys. And they don't need more Matisse and Garcia to help them get one extra buy as it relates to September 14th. At all. They don't need them at all. And that's what fans need to understand, but, you know, they don't care. They just want the fight. They don't care where the money comes from. But the problem is we're not fronting the bill. If if, if, if it was that easy, that fight would have been got made. And I, I just don't think it's going to happen. Right. Well, listen, guys, I don't want to take up too much of your time, man. But thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Man, thanks for coming on, Kim. Always Absolutely. Always See you guys soon. All right, Kim. CT, there you go, man. You got you got what you wanted right from the you know one of the guys that's at the very top of the sport. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Hey, uh, now one other thing. What do you guys think about this Mike Alvarado thing? Is he turning the fight down with I don't know if not his name, but Rob Nicole, whatever the height. Yeah. Is he turning the fight down because he wants more money or, or what? Yeah, he wants more money. <clears throat> He wants wow. to get paid. I mean, he, he basically said uh, the fight is closed, but, you know, Bob Arum, I don't well, know. Well, the date Bob is Arum. scheduled for October 19th. He wants to fight, but he just wants to get paid. I mean, I can't be yeah. mad at him. And, 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 you know, I want y'all to give him some shit because everybody's assuming Danny's afraid and it's the power syndrome. Well, there you go. You got Pavatnikov Pavet- that showed that he has a lot of power, and now Mike Alvarado wants more money to fight. <laughs> I don't like what Steve Kim said. I mean, it's not that I don't like what he said personally. I mean, what he said in terms of these networks using their power to coerce promoters to do certain things with their entire stable based on one fighter. For instance, uh, Pavotnikov is signed to Banner. So he can't fight nobody on Golden Boy because if he does, all his other fighters can't fight on HBO. That's that's whack. Because there's better fights for Pavotnikov on one at one forty in Golden Boy. Yeah, You know? But uh C T we're gonna gotta let you go and uh get in some couple of more news and notes and then wrap it up. All right, man. Thanks a lot. No problem. So uh, he covered a lot for us. Uh, I guess the Alvarado, we kind of touched on that. Oh, um, uh, that, you know, it's funny. Bob Arum said that even though HBO, man, James, I'm going to pick this up, James. 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 James, you there? James, you there? Yeah, man. Wait, I'm fucking wait, here. wait, wait. Before you even start, absolutely no racism or I'm dunking on you. I'm not even going to tell you no racism and then hope that you hear me. Then dun- No, I'm dunking on you because you're killing me. People love you, but they hate you. So you got to get them all to love you. Go. I'm good. I'm, I'm not even in a bad mood right now, man. It's just. I know you're in a bad mood because you don't even hey. like Steve Kim. I seen you calling while he was on. Vic. What up? Vic, are you there? Vic, I'm why? Here. I, I want to get right into it in regards to Guillermo Oregano. Why is Top Rank treating Oregano like that? Why? Don't you think it's more on, HBO Jay, and not on, Top Vic. Rank? Hold on, Vic, because I don't know why he always picks true. on you, Vic. Listen, listen, listen. Dana, listen, listen. Know, listen. We got 850000 to fight. Rigan, though, Rigan, though, he got 850000 Come on. Hold man. on. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Rigan, I'll let you talk, and then I'll keep going. Rigan, can easily be a co-main event with Miguel Cotto and the Del Rodriguez fight because they're fighting in Florida. Rigan, though, is from Florida. You can't tell me that they could put Terrence Crawford on, but they can't put 
rigging the on the person that's but in the HBO top ten pound for pound, the person that beat Donaire. What are you? James. Please don't tell me that. James, it's it's not Bob Arum. HBO doesn't want Rigandow, man. Why don't they want Rigandow? Rick, Dude, okay. You didn't hear the. You didn't hear. You didn't hear any of the conversation with Steve Kim. I did, man. I I, I did not hear. Uh, so we're gonna have to go back to the podcast. Where there's no okay, way okay. physically that we could go back and rehash those okay, forty minutes. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, let me just ask you a couple of basic questions. Um. Rigo knocked out Willie Casey. He knocked out Tian Kennedy. He knocked down Marquine, I think it was two or three times, and slept him to a full unanimous decision. Then he beat Donaire. Why is Rigo now all of a sudden not exciting or uh, people won't, you know, to, what's, what? I'm going I'm to I'm 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 say this as calm as possible, and I'm going to say this so everybody can understand. The new stigma for black fighters that promotional companies try to use when they're marketing or networks try to use is, oh, he's not exciting because he's not getting punched in the fucking face all the goddamn time. Like other fighters, they say, oh, that's not exciting. That's the new, that's the new knock on the black fighters nowadays. So I'm, I'm going to get out ahead of it because I want everybody to see and, and go back and just listen to the bullshit that they say. That's what's going on nowadays. You know, oh, you have to get punched in the face and, uh, you know, have a, a fight of the year, then you're good. But if you're boxing and not getting hit and schooling the shit out of the guy, you know, then it's good. That's because the uneducated boxing fan is, is interested in the brawling, the mauling, the bullshit that has nothing to do with boxing. The uneducated fan is the one who's tuning in. The uneducated fan is saying that, oh, man, they don't want to see that. That's why I don't like boxing fans at all. Because they don't know shit and they don't appreciate shit. That's very frustrating. And I didn't get racist, did I? Nope. Except for okay. saying black fighters, but... Uh, no, mean, no, no, no. That's I not mean, get, I, No, no, no. I get what thing. you're saying. If, you're calling... If, you're calling if I say the black... fact and I give my opinion... And, and I'm stating something specifically toward black fighters. That's not being racist. Like, no, 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 no. I mean, but you are categorizing Rigandow in... But that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. But he's not black, though. He's Cuban. He, he is doesn't black. even speak English. He's natural. And let me tell you something, Ness, and everybody listening, okay? Because you guys don't know about the history of the slave trade. Rigandow is black. His nationality is Cuban. Andre Berto is black. His nationality is Haitian. Do you understand that, Ness? Anderson Silva is black. His nationality is Brazilian. I understand. Okay? Brazil has, Brazil has 100 million African, oh, excuse me, Africans in their country. They have more uh, black people in their country than the United States. They have 100 million black people. The United States has 40 million. You want to know why? Because of the African, the Atlantic Coast slave trade. Okay. I understand what you're saying. Okay, James, so but, but so if you understand that, color. then you should know that Laura is black, Edison Miranda is black, Rigado is black. But 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 when you Stevenson say black, is black, Stevenson say... is black. Their nationality is different. That's what you have to understand. You're categorized by your race. If I look at you and you look at me, I'm black. You will probably check something else, man. Okay. So black people know when they see a black people. That's why they. But they have census reports. You check the box. Nationality and race. Right, let me is two ask you this. Things. Let me ask you this. Do you think Rigandow would check the box that says black or He's, Hispanic? Go to YouTube. Go to YouTube and put in Rigandow, comma Afro Cuban. The nigga spoke about it. He said, I, I, I'm Afro Cuban. I'm black. You want to know why? Because there's racism in every country and they call him a mariate or whatever the fuck that shit is called in Spain too because there's race. Separation in every country. Now, okay, 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 okay. We're dead in that. Silly. We Please that. don't we be going, silly and 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 and, 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 and and try to go that route. Please don't go that route. Now we're going that's going the wrong the Hold turn. on, James. Hold on. We're going to strictly say that I'm Afro-Cuban, which okay. means he's like me, saying that I'm African-American. Okay, okay. Same okay. thing. We're going off the deep end, though. Hold on. Kimo, what's up? Yo, Ness, can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. 
If I hear the word black one more time, I'm going to go fucking crazy, man. Seriously. <laughs> Let's cut this bullshit. Seriously. <laughs> Let me tell you something, yeah? Listen, James, listen to me, yeah? You know why? Hey, wait, wait, Kimo. Wait, wait, wait. Let's not wait, be crazy. Kimo. He didn't say anything racist today. Go ahead, go ahead, man. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Kimo, before you attack him, he didn't say yeah. anything wow. racist today, so leave him alone. All right, all right, whatever. I, I disagree, but I'll make a fair point. Yeah? Look, just listen to this. Look, you say Rigandau is, is not getting on because he's black, whatever. I disagree. Look at Klitschko, yeah? Look at Klitschko. He got taken off HBO, correct? He kept winning. He kept knocking out people. But why did he get taken off? Because he's not entertaining. It's the same with Rigan Dow. I love watching Riggy, man. He's fascinating. But you got to understand, guys, we are a minority. We are not the, main, the mainstream. Yeah? The way Rigan Dow fights, yeah, he knocks out guys. But the rest of the fight to the mainstream fan is just fucking boring. It's the way it is, guys. We need to accept this. It's, we are not the major the majority. Are you mean the majority as in appreciating the sweet times? Is that what you're saying? Well, we got to face facts, James. You know what I mean? The majority of the people that watch fucking boxing, they just want to see action. You know? I yeah. just said chemo. Why would you call in it? And you just saying what I just said. I said, the, but I used the term uneducated boxing fans. I, I said the same thing you said. And that's the problem. All right, so, so that's you know, good. Lessons, so that's good. You guys agree. So later. now I'm going to 408. 408, what's up? What up, man? Uh, I, I want to touch on that point. This is Abe. What's up, man? What's up, Abe? Hey, what's up, baby? Yeah, what up, Abe? Shit, man. I'm over here in the fucking park playing bass with my son. Um, I was going to mention, uh, I don't want to see Carlos winning his fucking ass. But he's Mexican. I'm Mexican. I didn't want to see that motherfucker on the fucking <laughs> ring. You know what I mean? That's why he don't get no pictures. He's fucking boring as fuck. I mean, you know what, I mean, I really got to go back and hear Steve Kim's answer for HBO. I mean, is is, is Steve Kim an authorized person to speak on that? I mean, or... No, he, he spoke is, directly to Bob Arum. What do you mean? He's okay. a reporter, no? No, 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 no. See, I tried, I tried to say it was Bob Arum, and then you're saying that it was HBO. So who was it, HBO or Bob Arum? No, 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 no. It was no. HBO. It was Bob HBO. Aaron, this is what Bob Aaron said. This is what Bob Aaron said to Raphael. Yeah. Bob Aaron said to Raphael, every time he mentions rigging down to HBO, they want to vomit. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that a little. But, the, but, but, but don't spoof feed me. That's bullshit, man. Listen, man, I'm not naive. I'm not going for the spin tactics. Is that what you guys are telling me? It, no. No, that's not what we're telling you. What we're telling, said, what we're telling you. No, no, no. And then, no, he, listen, and then he went. He, Steve Kim spoke to Bob today. And Bob Adam Fado said that HBO is not going to exile my guy. I'm going to bring him on the Mikey Garcia undercard. That's the plan. Yep. He said he's going to go to bat for his guy. But, James, I got to let you go. Kimo, I got to let you go. We're ending the show because, remember, I'm not doing it for my home because of the whole buying a home situation. But, James, Okay, Ness, real you. quick, real quick, Ness, man. I just want to say that I was at the Floyd Mayweather Canelo press oh, conference. I ain't seen nobody up there, man. Man, it was a lot of people uh, up there, man. I had a good time, great night of boxing. 45. So I was up 45. there, you know what I mean. Did you wear I your didn't blue get a chance TMT to hat? meet anybody, so I just wanted to wear your say vans? That. Did you Did you wear your blue TMT hat? I had on the gray Mayweather Boxing Club T-shirt with the white and blue TMT hat. I, I, I had on everything but that I said, but I mean, it was just a normal day. Like, I mean. It wasn't no problems. I had a good time, and it was loud. Everybody was crazy. It was so many people. So I mean, but I had a good day. But I was up there, I'm and glad, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, day, I didn't see L. L. L was saying, "Oh, I'm gonna be up there," and I, I ain't see L. So you Jay, know, tough guys, tough guys get up. tough I'm over the phone, and tough day, guys get tough on the internet. You know what I'm saying? So man, I just wanted to put that out there. No L. All right, brother. All right, bro. Kimo, man, thanks for staying up late and uh, helping us come back. And we sure, will man. Welcome back, back, guys. I really missed you guys, man. It's good that you're back. And uh, good luck with the moving and finding the new house, uh, Ness. I hope it works out for you, man. Yeah, man. We're going we're gonna to have to do something, man. We're going to have to probably throw rocks at my contract or something. But uh, <laughs> thanks, man. Thanks for the support to everybody out there that sent me messages. Abe, I know you're still on. I want to personally thank you for your donation. I believe that was you, right? Mm, yeah, that's no problem, man. It's good. Your official tissue right there. Chemo, thanks for staying up. 
Uh, Vic, any shout outs? Abe, I'm gonna let you go because we're getting out of All here. All right, man. Any shout outs? Oh, I mean, just just thanks uh, for our loyal listeners, man. I know we were off for uh, whatever it was, 10, 13 days. I got your tweets, man. Uh, yeah, we never leaving, man. That that whole uh, that whole uh, what was that Virgil Hunter whisper thing was just a joke, man. Yeah, man. Tell this me is your it. platform as well as ours, so don't worry about that. It's just sometimes our personal stuff gets involved, and uh, we just got to roll with the punches, baby, but we'll try to be here every Thursday, every Sunday, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, until, you know, I get back in a, a spot, because the, th- the, the problem is everything that we do requires a lot of internet. That is the reason that today there's no YouTube, so... I'm going to try my best. Like, look, man, it's late as hell. I got to go to work in the morning, and I'm over here. I'm going to have to drop a few miles, not one or two or five, about 15 <laughs> or more to where I'm staying at until the closing uh, finalizes. So, you know, I'm here for y'all. Damn, Pluck. Pluck, what's up, man? Make it short, baby, because we getting out of here. Uh, hey, what's up, info? Nothing, man. Hey, uh, Nick, so back. you don't have the same address? Nah, no more. Oh, well, you got to send me your address, man, because I was going to see you some shit. Well, you can send it there. I, I got all my mail on hold and, and, and going to a P.O. box. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, I, oh, you you like movies and shit, right? Yeah, man, I'm a big movie fan. Oh, uh, I, I got you, then. But I, I'm going to see you some shit that I got. You know, but other than that, everybody black, god damn it. That's all I got to say. Right, <laughs> um, yeah, man. So everybody, you know, that has been sending messages and stuff. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here, no, before we go, man, uh, we, we got to get your pick on Edwin Rodriguez and uh, Gracha, man. Since Dude, that's you know what's boy. crazy? This itinerary, Matt's going to kill me because there's so much we haven't talked about. I know, man. Sorry, man. <laughs> but, uh, all right, we are going to do that. Damn. We got to do, I got, yo, know, you're home already. I have to go home or whatever that is that I'm considering. Home. Let's just get picks in and then we're off. Let's just get picks in. Uh, I never heard of uh, Drian Francisco, so I'm going to go with Chris Avalos, even though Chris Martin beat him. Uh, Glenn Tapia, I'm going with Glenn Tapia. And this is ESPN2 Las Vegas. This is happening July 12th, uh, which is mañanas. Tomorrow. On Telemundo, we got Alan Martinez versus Charlie Serrano. I don't even know. I think, is this, how do you pronounce this, guys? Is that, that's not Alan. So what is that? Alan? Alan Martinez, is that you talking about? Yeah, regardless how you pronounce it, that's not the person I thought it was. So I, I don't even know, man. That's, <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, yeah, I got I got Avalos, and I got Glenn Tapia in a tough fight. Uh, Abihan is a good fighter, uh, good step up. My trouble with my boy Tapia since uh, he's from my hood, but I hope he wins. Nah, Tapia ain't gonna have no trouble with that dude. Ah, uh, you you'll be surprised. Mm-mm. I I uh, we interviewed him. Jackie did actually, and uh, he's excited about this fight because he's gonna get to prove to the fans that you know um, he's the real deal, and you know he hasn't just been knocking out a bunch of regular people. Uh, man, it, it's so thin. So we're just gonna. Go I mean, if you want to stick to, you want to stick to two. Uh, oh to, shit! To, Robert Stieglitz is back, defending yeah, he's, his he's, WBA he's fight, title. WBO the, title. The school teacher's fighting an Asian school teacher. So. Oh my god! The dude's <laughs> the dude's an Asian school teacher for real? No, I don't know. I'm just making fun. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, I was your boy. <laughs> Dude, that was about to freaking crack up from. From Wepa America, I was Buenas Puerto Rico. What the hell is that? Did did, did they get that right, Mike? My... I don't know. I think yo, I think Matt watches too, watches too much boxing. I, I don't even know half these fights. <laughs> Daniel Rivera versus Felipe. Uh, whatever. Straw weights, Matt. Really? Uh, but yeah, now let's get to the two big fights. Uh, overseas. Yeah, the Delvin. I mean, the Edwin and the and the Dennis. Man, I am. Nervous. I mean, you guys already know I'm not high on Edwin, even though he's Dominican. I want him to do good, but he he's never shown that. Like, even if he wins this fight, he is what you guys should be saying Rigandau is. Rigandau is actually knocking people out. This dude is just winning. This is what you call a boring fighter. He just wins. That's it. But um, I don't know if Gravich is going to be too big for him, man. This is going to be at a catchweight. It's uh, 
I don't know, man. I don't know. Edwin. Oh, man. And and, and Gravich, remember, Gravich is the same dude that knocked out Ishmael Salak, who could box and punch. But couldn't I got take the upset, man. I'm not going to lie. I got the upset. I got Gracha. Or Gravich. Gracha, I think it's how it's pronounced. I've never really been behind that one, man. But I, I'll eat crow uh, come Sunday if that happens. But I'm going to go going. with. Man, this is so tough because Edwin looked garbage versus Will Brzezinski. I don't know. Uh, man, gun to my head. Fuck it. I'm riding with the Platano. I'm going to say Lou DeBella got some something going on over there. He's got some money in Monaco? Something, man. Uh, and then, Khalib, and then. Your boy Khalib, who signed to Bob Arum for no reason at all. What you mean? He's about to, uh, he's going to fight, uh, what's his face next? Who? I don't know. I don't know who he's going to fight. He's going he's gonna to have even, to fight 140, 140. I don't even know who he's fighting guys. now. Who is this? Soli Ameni? I don't beat. know, dude. It's, it, I think he's uh, I think he's South African, dude. Man, when we need South Africa to call, he doesn't even call. Uh, no, he he uh, he put me on his boy that's fighting Eddie Chambers. Uh, I don't oh, even know how to yeah, see his yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, I seen those tweets. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Khalid, man, just for the I'm hell of it. I'm on Khalid too, man. So, but uh, yo, the big fight actually that uh, no one's really talking about is uh, the Kelbrook Jones. Kell Brook Jones. But I mean, this is on the radio. 20th, it's not even the right? main event, dude. You, you guys, you guys want to complain about Zhu Shiming being the main event of a card? Luke Campbell is the main event of this card. It's not even Brook Jones. Yep. Luke Campbell is the main event making his debut in England. But Vic, that fight is happening on the twentieth, right? Nah, it's this weekend, no? Oh, I thought it was the twentieth. Nah, the twentieth is Chisora and Malik Scott. But that fight is this I weekend. Know, it's, I, I don't think Matt would miss that fight. No, nah, I'm pretty sure it's this weekend. You haven't seen all those press releases we've been getting about this fight? I've seen the 20th. No, I'm going to check right now. I'm pretty sure that's this week, bro. Double I am check, pretty sure check. that is this week. Hold on. Who's, who is it? It's not Kevin Rooney. Is it Lieber? Let me see, bro. Damn, I think... I think I got something else. Um, nah, bro. It's the 13th, bro. Well, I don't even... It don't even matter, like... It's the 13th, but I'm just saying, like... It don't even matter, because you know what I did want to say? It don't even matter when it's happening. For all you guys that think Brooke is good, this nigga's a bum, man. When Vic, tell me the last time you seen a good fighter or a great fighter have trouble with a guy with seven losses and rematch him. Juan Ma Lopez? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean? How could you even say Juan Ma? That how, how could you consider him good or great? Well, he, he just was, got trashed uh, three he, times in a was, row. He was pound for pound when he lost to. So pound for know. pound because he never fought Celestino or Yurokis in that time. I'm just saying, hey, hey, hey you, man. If you're jumping on me, I, I don't make pound for pound lists. I don't care for him, but I'm just saying. Anyway, man. That's you got Carson Jones show. and Kell Brook. Kell Brook can't even make 147 anymore. I, I lost faith in that guy. Uh, that was your boy. But he anyway, was, that's so. been the show, man. Thanks for all the support. Continue it. You know, make sure you cop a shirt. Support, donate, all that good shit. Just check the site out if you can't afford nothing. We yeah, I might, I might start a Vic to Macau phone. I'm seriously considering, bro. Vic wants to go to Macau. You had it. You hear it here first. And, uh, you know, even though Kel Brook is going to get the win, it's going to be another ugly win. Carson Jones is going to put some hands on him. And all I can say is it's going to be a cruel summer for my boy Kel Brook. <laughs>